Everything working? Okay, good. Hi, headshot. I am Ippy. So thank you for the treats and hydrate. I put it at Take nappy? I kinda did. But then I had to leave the, the warmth and comfort of my bed to go stream, so... I guess stream from bed will be over for me. Mm. I think sometimes I would love it for my uh, PC setup to uh, be in my bedroom uh, and not in a separate room. But, on the other hand, I think it's just, yeah. Like, I envy it for the people who are able to do, like, um, able to do subathons and like uh are basically right there like when they go to bed and stuff so they can just get up and get on their pc uh without having to leave their room or just you know being able to play pc games uh from uh from my my bed without having to 
like get a steam deck or something, but on the other hand. It's It's fine up here, I guess. I think that would make me too lazy if I just like spend so much time in bed. I already spend a lot of time in bed again now because I'm just like constantly having to nap because I'm always so tired. Yeah, fair. Um, I know. I I have a way to put my switch downstairs and connect it to uh the old TV that used to be in the living room that I uh got because Dad bought a new one. But because I have to move my entire switch dock downstairs as well, I just have a lot of time just don't end up using it because it's like so much effort. I just end up napping anyway. I don't even end up playing. So I've been uh, practicing Splatoon 3, but it isn't playing Red Dead and Clank Rips Apart. Yeah, I mean, originally we were going to do Splatoon on Wednesdays with Ludi, but then we decided to do Apex one time, and Apex is like, oh yeah, by the way, um. Hey, they're like, oh yeah, by the way, uh, potential remote control execution exploit, and we're like, oh, well, never mind! And we're like, well, did we do the turn again then? And then, then we just ended, ended up settling on doing art instead, so. You know. Thank you, Shulk! Thank you for the nice cock, I grew it myself! Hope you didn't mind the IRL jump scare yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, so uh so during practice didn't happen. <laughs> Damn show got this ear cock IRL. Yeah, he did. <laughs> In the moment Ape Sex is against protection again I'm all up on so fast. Yeah, I missed it. I've definitely missed it.
Uh, also, a whenever you want me to hop in uh, to PC, just let me know. Long cat, yes, I have long cat with me because I'm Ippi. Oh yeah, today, um, I went to the studio today and, uh... Praise long cat, yes, praise long cat. Long cat is not even at his longest right now, I think if I do this shape. But long cat is even longer. But you can't see most of long cat anyway, so we keep, we keep long, but not that long cat. <laughs> yeah, we were. I was at the studio today earlier, um, and uh, the specialist that like is in charge of like helping everyone with like doing the specific thing they've chosen. Uh, she got a new kitten. Uh, little boy. <laughs> Uh, it's a little boy. He um, he's nine weeks old, but she couldn't leave him alone at home yet. Um, and her fiance couldn't be home either. So, what ended up happening is that she took him with her. Um. So, we just had a tiny kitten with us. He did go to have his nappies every so often. Uh, but he sat on the table for a good while and we got to look at the, the fawn over him, which is really, really adorable. Uh... Do we have a little video of him that I could put in the Discord, but, uh, I'd have to listen back to it to see if it's not like anything that uh, would like dox me in any way because it's like this is like in an environment where like everyone's speaking all kinds of stuff and you know you commit war crimes no little bob or did not commit war crimes but yeah pluty uh like the lozagas and like get to see the video about the little bob or so Oh, I gotta come play back real quick while I mute my mic. Right, looks to be that I can just post it. Um, think most of you have uh, more access to. Uh, the EQ Discord, so I'll just put it there. Let's put it in Soul's Lobby. You 
you can actually hear jazz to electric boogaloo in the background. <laughs> Is that room? That's where we meet IRL. That's also where we met for the first time. So, a little bit of lore there. Yeah, little robber should be in Sul's lobby. Battle shovel, um, bat. Well, let me look up. Is uh, I see the question of why is it partially shaven? Is it because of Why did you ask me that question, by the way? Am I about to be hit over the head? Bob or uh ninety nine percent of cats I've seen are from fuzzballs and on the skin Egyptian cats. Yeah, but um you have to realize um Sphinx cats uh, and especially Peter Bolts are probably the best cat you can have if you are allergic to them. Is there's hardly any cat hair that they shed that could trigger an allergy. Um, and I think also like they're uh, especially with the Peterbalt, I think like they're they don't have like a common uh, thing that makes people have allergy reactions um, like in their skin oils and stuff if I remember correctly so they're like basically the cat you want to have if you are allergic to them it's that uh, that those have the highest chance of you not having an allergic reaction to them or at least so I've heard I could be wrong about that, but that is a common choice for people with allergies. So... That is why a lot of people choose the furless cats. It's a little bit jarring as well, but it's not the... It's not the first furless cat I've seen. I, I think I've probably also seen uh, both types. I have seen uh, Sphinxes and I have seen what I assume would be the Peterballs. Is uh, I for a while worked in a uh, like a cat hotel. 
So I saw all kinds of like types of cats. I saw like you know your regular old house cat. Uh, you know there are a mix of everything basically. And I've seen uh, I've seen like actual pure breeds. <laughs> and uh, I've seen both sphinxes there. Um, their beats are alive and horrible. Mm, depends. Depends on what um, what they are bred for. Is with dogs. Yeah, but that is mostly because um, a lot of dog breeds are bred because they look cute, but that actually gives them a lot of, like, health detriments. Uh, I think with a lot of cat breeds, that's not really the case. There are, of course, there are absolutely are purebreds that are, you know, not the greatest. There's cats that have really short paws. Uh, there are, of course, the Persian cats that have the really flat, uh, have the really flat faces. Yeah, munchkins, uh, are like that. Um, another one can be a Scottish Fold because they have the folded ears. They look really cute, but, uh, you can imagine that's probably not the healthiest for them. But, yeah. Some, some breeds can naturally have, uh, some health issues not necessarily related to the way they look, it's just, like, genetic diseases. Uh, I know that, uh, I think Maine Coons sometimes have that. But other than that, pure, pure beds of cats, I feel like a lot of the time refer to if, like, where the cat came from, like, originally. And, like, that hasn't, like, that line hasn't really changed. For example, uh, I almost have a purebred British short hair. So it's literally just, their origin is a short hair cat as British. They were specially, specifically bred for anything else, they're just British short hairs. Um... I say it might is almost one because it's a mix of a, a pure breed British short hair uh, and a mix between a British short hair and a Turkish Angora. But yeah, you have the you have the cats that are like an absolute mix of everything. That's like what a lot of people have, and then you have the ones that are. Uh, Leaning more towards like actually having a breed, and then there's the ones that are like purposely kept within the same breed. Uh, but of course, probably best way to get a cat is to just go to a shelter and see what cat likes you instead of picking a cat and then just not having a bond with them. Or, or you can just like, you can do what my, my aunt and uncle ended up doing, which is, uh, getting, uh, <laughs> getting an unwanted litter. They've got food outside your house, some will show up. We don't have a lot of stray cats here though, so you'd just be stealing someone's cat. We don't have a lot of raccoons here either.
Yeah, um... Basically what happened, um... They went to a breeder who was, uh... They were getting, uh... Like, they were basically offering some kittens, uh, for cheaper. Because Mama Cat escaped! I got pregnant. So they weren't pure beats, so I was like, here you go. <laughs> so they have a cat that is part Siamese, part, I don't know. Still definitely has a Siamese character. Oh god, Siamese cats. <laughs> you want a cat? That fights you on everything? Cat of Siamese. Trust me, those things are... something. <laughs> I've had two of them now. Um, both are little fighters. Their previous cat... Uh... They actually picked up from the shelter... It was a Siamese. It was one of the typical, uh, typical like Felix cats. He was also named Felix, actually. <laughs> um, they picked him up from a shelter. He was the big bad cat of the shelter. Everyone was scared of him, and he just crawled in my uncle's lap and just laid there. So they were like, "Okay, well, found the one we want to keep." But um. That cat terrified any cat that came near it. It's my, uh, my aunt and uncle, they train their, uh, their cats to, uh, stay in a harness. And then they go camping and they take the, take the cat with them. Uh, on that camping site, every single cat walks around their space in a white circle. First of all, because Felix would just maul them. Well, not even necessarily maul them, he would just stand over them. Medicinally. <laughs> but now they have this, uh, this black Siamese cat. His name is Fellow. He's scared. So the cats will still walk around their camping space in a huge circle because he actually physically attacks. And on several occasions has broken free of his harness. I like black cats as well. My parents don't really want a black cat because not necessarily because, you know, like the whole like witch series type, but because they feel like they can't see what the cat is thinking because you're just looking at a void. Which on one hand, fair enough. But on the other hand, cat's expressions don't work like human expressions, so unless you actually know what cat's facial expression means why, it's kind of useless. So... Yeah, I like black cats. I don't mind them. And there's like little voids with like just a pair of eyes peeking out of maybe a nose. <laughs> yeah, he is scary. He will also like sometimes get angry at them. And just like physically like attempt to fight them and then you have to leave him alone for like five minutes. Like he is actually like he is a typical Siamese, he's scary. He has his own little attitude, and oh boy, if you dare mess with it. So, yeah. That's something you have to look out for. Like, if you if you want a cat with a really strong personality, with a really strong attitude, get a sign. That's a little fun fact. Most Siamese are actually black and white. A typical Siamese fur color comes from the ragdoll. The more you know. We 
Yeah, I also had an encounter with Siamese at the cat hotel. Um... I always went in on Sunday mornings, so one Sunday morning I come in and there's a... Uh, I think this was like one of the first times I went there. There was a closed room. Like, the castle have like their little, little quote-unquote rooms. It's more like, uh... More like little cages, but you know, hotel terms. The cats all get their own room. Uh... There was a, uh, cat room door closed. I look in there and there's a Siamese. Absolutely did not like anything. That thing just... Just wanted blood. Was not happy. Did not want anything to do with the other cats. Did not want anything to do with humans. Just anger. Next week, you're still there. Room's open. And I look around to see where he is, and I just see this very adorable little cat just look at me. And he's all happy, and he's all cuddly. I'm like, what the fuck happened to you? Just last week, you were trying to murder my ass. And now you're friendly as fuck. <laughs> Yeah, my favorite ones were always the, the big fluffy ones. Uh, saw several Maine Coons, saw several Norwegian Forest Cats. I think I've seen, like, Ragdolls, uh, and Persians as well. Absolutely my favorite. They're just so... so fluffy! Like, so soft, so fluffy. They're usually very friendly as well, actually. Like, little, little gentle giants. You can just pick them up and I don't mind. But yeah, um... Usually... We had, like, Sphinx cats, uh, there as well. They were not preferred. Because they would, uh... Like, you think they would be easier to clean after because they don't have any fur, but apparently those are the dirtiest little bastards you could get. Apparently they just make a mess out of everything. But yeah, I, had, I saw the Sphinx cats, I saw the Peterbalds, um... One of them randomly jumped on my shoulders. So that was uh, <laughs> a little bit of a jump scare. All of a sudden, there's just a cat standing on my shoulders, and I'm just like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> they have little but more bubble marks around. Yeah, I never really had any big injuries working there. Uh. I've seen people get injured. Because I've always been very careful when it comes to the, the cats. Like, if I even suspect they don't want anything to do with me, I get the gloves. Some of them did not work like that. Uh... Some of them also don't really try to be careful around the more scared or aggressive cats. Because uh, our boss, uh, she ended up cleaning one of the rooms I was responsible for because that cat supposedly was a little bit violent. Um... I could just understand why he was considered violent after I watched her clean the room because she basically just cornered him uh, I was just there like maybe if you were you know a little bit more gentle with the cat it wouldn't attack you like that anyway she got uh her neck scratched yeah 
That... That was one of the injuries. Yeah! Maybe if you don't corner a kind of scared cat, that wouldn't happen. But, hey. You know, lesson learned, probably not. <laughs> Another one... Um... It was like a, a, a curly, uh, like a, a cat with some curly fur, who they ended up having to bathe because he got poop stuck to his fur, and um, we heard that thing screaming from upstairs. Uh. And one of the other volunteers, who was bathing the cat at the moment, came down with his entire arm covered in scratches. And we were like, why didn't you, like, ask for help? And he was just like, I thought the towel would be enough. It wasn't. So yeah, uh, <laughs> comes with the job. Oh. Hi, Rebecca! Thank you so much for the raid! We were just talking about cat stories and that kind of stuff. But yeah. Uh, I suppose I should actually start drawing at some point, huh? cat stories from uh, my time uh, volunteering as uh, a cleaning person at a uh, uh, at a cat hotel. <laughs> Poison the background music almost says I can't kill. That's Mimi. Gotta run and run but enjoy your arting. No worries. No worries. I hope you had fun in your stream and uh, take care of yourself. I don't need to stay around. I appreciate it. I appreciate the raid enough already. But yeah, um, the background music uh, was made by Mimi, uh, and the vocals are also Mimi, so. I think, anyway, it sounds like. Oh, I should probably start drawing at some point. Eh. Hold on, excuse me. Ah. I couldn't reach my keyboard. <laughs> uh, I did a little bit of progress in the time that I didn't stream. I got a good chunk of the line art done. Uh, well, for the fish anyway, I need to do some stuff for... Uh... I can't see- where's my new tab on There we go. <laughs> it's being covered by my, my camera. Because I'm wanting to put on some music for myself. <coughs> Sorry. As you know the drill, you guys have your, your your stream save music to listen to, and I got my non-stream save music to listen to. What do I want to listen to? What have I been listening to, actually? Mm. Sure. We'll do that one. Anyway, that story's over. Um, I did some uh, some extra effects on the eyes already. Yeah. 
Because uh, I usually not do the eyes lineless, so I figured I might as well um, just immediately start with that. Because usually how I would do it, I would um, I would draw on the eyes first, and then later on I would get rid of the lines when I do uh, the shading and stuff. But I figured well, I might as well just do it like this immediately. Um, added some uh, some color overlay on the eyelashes and other stuff that's being covered. Ah, excuse me. Uh, we just got to draw in the rest that I haven't done yet. Kind of most of it. Just need to do some of the hair in the back. Um, some of the background stuff, like some of the rocks here. Oh, wrong layer, oopsies. I forgot, I'm not on this layer. Also, yes, if you, uh, if you're looking for, uh, something like a, you know, something that looks a little like what I'm working on right here, uh, you can always either commission me or, uh, attempt to, uh, get it for cheaper and enter the, uh, the monthly sub art raffle, although you may have already involuntarily been thrown in there by some of the gifting that happened last stream because dear god I haven't actually set a new goal for that have I manage goals subscription oh no never mind we lost three never mind we're back below the goal again So actually open the uh the little, 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 little. Ah. Not specific ones in that. Oh shit. Hold on. Ooh. No, that's that's an eraser. Forget the ad, uh, the um, seaweed scrap between the tatas. There we go.
I mean, I guess also, uh, kind of wait until, um, before they start doing terror tournaments. Wanna go to work? I guess so! Take care! Oh, Bull or Corn won't kill ya. Nope. So I swapped the runner is here. Oh well.
No. Oh, Blue is going live. I'm going to be joining Pluty for some uh, tarot learning, so. He's, you know, it's something I'm interested in.
was about right for that. Done all that. Come on, Brown, I guess I just have to do the water texture now. So I guess I'm gonna do that. Did you listen to the new Storm song yet? Uh, no, I have not actually. I was going to, but I kept seeing it while I was not in the place where I could listen to it, so. Uh, I'll have to do that in a little bit. Oh god, that really breaks it, never mind. That's better. Oh, 
two of these are easy. Hello. 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 I'm here to learn. Hello. It is my beloved. How are you? Wow. Wow. Are you on the? Then I. Are you on the right mic? I guess not. It does it sound weird? Yes. Uh, it shouldn't because it has the right microphone input. Explain how weird. Um. I don't know. It just sounds not like your usual microphone. It's the same I always use. It sounds shittier. Damn. Let me check. Not that. No, this setting is right. Is the input of your voice mod correct? I just checked. Uh, the voice mod is correct. The NVIDIA broadcast is correct. Is Discord correct? The Discord is also correct. Yes. The stream sound weird. I don't know. No, no, no one has complained yet, so I figured it's fine. I don't know, to me it sounds different than usual. I don't know. Oh my god, speaking of Jerome! Thank you for the raid! Welcome! I would love Congrats, to, uh, Mimic, I would love getting to see if it sounds different on stream, but uh, it's giving me an ad. Oh no. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say it's giving you an aneurysm. Is it that bad? <laughs> You're packing heat? Wait, what? What you packing? Heat. Why is it always packing heat and not packing cold? Take these wandering souls off my hands. Don't you worry, I have everything under control. Your, your Discord mic sounds different from your stream mic. Okay, that is funny. Which are half of them are hobby. I am somehow not surprised, especially not when they come from your stream. Yeah, that isn't Because guns are hot, temperature-wise, true, they do get pretty hot if you use them too much. Uh, what if I just? That didn't do anything, did it? No. This neither. Uh, speak on. Ah, blah, 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 no. blah, blah, blah. I guess it I sounds have a little no more, more echoey than usual. Maybe because my microphone is a bit further away than usual? I don't know. Maybe. I, I didn't notice how echoey yesterday's stream was until I watched it about today. Jesus yeah. Christ, that was terrible. Why did no one warn me? Everyone said it was fine. I mean... Everyone figured that was the best of quality you could get out of streaming in a kitchen. I mean, I don't know. I could have tried at least to fix it, but no one said, Oh, God, this is bad. So I just kept going. Look, I've watched, like, uh, streams where, like, uh, people with, like, high-tech setups, like, do, like, cooking or, like, baking streams, and it always sounds a lot worse as well, so that's just really what you expect from it. Yeah. That thrill. So the mouth packing is really good today. Yes, because I finally figured out a few streams ago why my model was so laggy. <laughs> I mean, it knew, I knew it was the connection between the iPhone and the Bridger, but I finally figured out why. The answer was, I am stupid. Also, I just realized, why do I ha not have a lighter with me? Why does it mean me? Oh, I found a lighter. <laughs> I thought Mimi was hiding it from me. I know, you need to light my candle. Your candle. And it. Yes. By atmosphere. And because it smells nice. I like scented candles. Mm, I, I feel like vanilla today. <laughs> Did you know van uh, vanilla scent is really good for getting the hobby on? Now you know. <laughs> Yes, it's a scent of love. Probably some other know. properties. 
feel like I probably... One of the 500 books I have lying around probably has more inf information on vanilla, but I'm too stupid right now to get them. <laughs> Not stupid, just too lazy. Oh, well, let's get to it. Wait, is the music too loud? Nah, it's not. Hey. Hey. Thank you for the hit bits. Now let's go gaming. See, this Darn called gaming. We're not Blue actually was gonna gaming. take a fat bong rip. Hm. I was gonna take a what? A fat bong rip. Wait, what? Yesterday or today? Right now, apparently. I know. I wish, but I don't have a bong with me. <laughs> Singing bye before work. That's okay. You're fun to work again. But just look, I have new cards. Look. They arrived. Already like a week ago. They're so shiny. I can't really... You can see when I do this. Shiny. 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 The camera doesn't really pick it up that well, but it's supposed to be like very pink hood color. Mm. Like a very creamy pink. I like my hair. I like similar to my hair. I think my camera is not that great. It could also be the lighting. God, I am thirsty. Thirsty. You know what? I'm gonna crack open the uh, boy one with the cold. <laughs> Basically the cold. Holographic tarot cards? I know, right? Well, they're not really holographic. They're just like shiny. They don't like really display a rainbow. They're just like gold. Gold and shiny. Metallic. Metallic, yes. That's the way. Metallic. Yeah, I've done it as well, which is handy, because now I don't actually need lights to read it, because even if I have just a little light from, like, the screens, I can still see what's on it. Mm. So I don't need to turn them on. But yes, would you like to learn about tarot? I would. You would, yes. Okay. Shall we start at the history of tarot? Did you know? Did you know that Tarot was originally just a normal playing card game in Italy? North Italy? Somewhere around 1440s and 1450s. Where? Yes, Minnie, where? Where? <laughs> yes, Mimi. You're Italian. Your Italian ancestors were playing with these cards. Where? 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 Shut the fuck up! <laughs> I look over for one second, I'm like, wait, I recognize it's a Moogle! It's an anime girl Moogle! <laughs> I, I was quickly changing it. I'm not changing shit. You're not changing shit, okay. Do you want to crack open a boy with a cold one? I want to pull it open your head sometimes. Why? There you go. I mean, you would technically be cracking open a cold one. It is indeed colder. The coldest of them all. <laughs> also, what the fuck is not safe for work for, guys? Have I missed something? Uh. This I don't air. know. So why am I so small? Actually, it's probably better if I'm so small. Muggle titties have enhanced my pooping session. Wait, <laughs> what? Jared, what are you looking at while you're pooping? Does Agma know? Has Agma seen it? As long as it's enhancing your time. <laughs> but as long as it, enhance it enhances quality time. The good thing I can only watch 160p while at work. I'm not showing anything phallic. What? It's cursed. Of course it is cursed. Is that, is that really like a not safe for work mod for Fall Guys? 
That might be, I don't know. Be oh, wow. weird. It's not safe for work. Uh, I mean, I have seen the not safe for work Splatoon thingy. Maybe it's something like that. It doesn't know for itself to have. It would be a shame if I was in a group chat with Arma right now. <laughs> trying to play Fall Guys with her. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't that be a shame if I mentioned this? Report <laughs> there to Arma. So there is our, there is our. Never sell the out, Jerem, be nice people. I never said I was gonna sell him out. That implies I get money. I don't know if Agma will give me money. Do you think she will give me money if I ask? I don't know. <laughs> Might as well just throw myself into space considering last time I reported near Agma shakes fist at Among Us. What? I'm confused. But yes, that will be. Power history, yes. It was. A card game. Apparently it got pretty complicated, which is why people are like, fuck it, we're gonna do fortune telling with it instead. Which is also why you have these uh, typical playing card thingies of Ace the King and Four Colors. In, in terms of divination tools, tarot cards are actually a relatively new addition to it. But they're also extremely versatile. Because you can use it for divination, you know, like having a little peek into the future. You can use it, you can use it for shadow work, which I'll get into a bit later. I think I already mentioned it a couple of times. Um, you can use it in witchcraft, part of spells. They're not necessary, but they can help if you feel connected to your deck and all. You can also use it to communicate with gods and your ancestors and other kinds of spirits around you. One of many ways to use them. Yes, yes. Oh, like we already have Sam. You accidentally communicate with me by just accidentally just like getting the death card tossed <laughs> at you. Yeah, that happens. The death card was calling me out. I had it on my previous deck, the fairy tale deck. I I left it up. Have a wacko and a Saturday good day. Um, I hope you don't need it urgently because I was planning on doing card readings last. Because the cards are currently sorted and I left my other deck upstairs. So we can use those cards to go through I all the requests. Can pull a card? Yeah, Shazzy can pull a card. What are we pulling the card for? Uh, how will work go? He's uh, requesting three cards. Yeah. I usually do, I usually have the spread of the first card is for the overall vibe of the day. Okay. The middle card is for something to look forward to, like a good thing happening or a big event happening. And the last card is something you should avoid today. Okay. That is usually how I do my daily spreads. They work really well. How they call Ogma red-handed when she shifted into someone else and I got thrown out that we all lost. Ogma really got you. Should I go get your other cards? I mean, we can just do it later. I was looking forward to using this new deck because I haven't used it. Actually. Okay. How will we go for Sam? General vibe for today. Forward to and what to avoid. Okay, let's see. General vibe is High Priestess upside down. <laughs> you can look forward to the Empress. <laughs> <laughs> I am top decking Major Arcana again. And what to avoid? Impa! The star upside down! Oh boy, well that's <laughs> fair. I will avoid the star upside down too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Damn. The three Major Arcanas, oh boy. <laughs> that sent me a reading. What a day! <laughs> 
You have to keep in mind I pull these randomly out of the deck because I have like uh, I have like a deck that like you can very clearly see if a card is going to be regular side up or upside down. So I just randomly oh, yeah. So I just like I fan them out slightly and I randomly just pull one. Is it the pattern on the back? Yeah, the pattern on the back is like yeah. it's, it's a one way pattern, not a double and double way. Yeah, I hate those. I had to look so much to find a deck I liked. This was one of the first I found and I wasn't too sure, but it's the only one that A looked cute and two also had like a back, but you couldn't tell which side was up. Yeah, I mean, I found so a way to work around pattern. it because for the rest, it's a really pretty deck. Anyway, so the vibe of uh, how your work is going to go is. Uh... Not the greatest, I suppose. Um, there might be some hiccups here and there due to uh, maybe some misunderstandings or, uh, you know, just some uh, perhaps some personal issues. Perhaps other people have some issues. Then the thing to look forward to. Um, let's see. Hmm... How would I... put this... How would I put this into context? I have to think for a second. Lily, how would you put, uh, put the Empress into the context of something to look forward to? The Empress? I... I see the Empress as a very motherly figure. Yeah. So I can be something like mom, something good. Something... Ah, uh, how should I explain it? Like, you could, of course, take a little uh, and uh, perhaps expect that perhaps you get, like, uh, a moment of contact with, uh, with a parental figure. Yeah, so someone was like a mother to you. Yeah, maybe someone will uh, take care of you today if you're having a rough time. So, that's a good thing. And then we get to the thing to avoid, which is the star upside down. Let me find the damn thing. That's a down. The star is usually a good card. Yeah, so upside down. Upside down, uh, yeah, to avoid. I mean, yeah, it is, it is I just, uh... The hopelessness? Yeah, try to keep your head up, uh, try not to, uh... Like, have it in your head too much if something doesn't go the way you want to. That kind of stuff. Like, if there's a disappointment, don't sit with it too long. Eat. Something along those lines. <laughs> Sounds like one hell of a day. Yeah, I mean, uh, three major arcana oopsies. <laughs> Just a little oopsie. Right. I don't know if Sam even had it. He went. He said he had to leave a while ago. <laughs> oh well, he'll be back. Yeah, I mean, at least he got to hear what the cards were. <laughs> I don't know if it makes it better, but <clears throat> he doesn't seem too confident in the talents, too happy about them. Just understandable. Cats are scary when you don't know what they mean. Yeah, especially when you just straight up pull uh, three major arcana for, uh, for just your regular old work day. Yeah, I was like, hey, Shul, you have a nice cut. <laughs> nice cook! <laughs> but oh well, I have already forgotten again that we want to add. What was I saying? Um... You... Oh yeah, what you can use yeah. Tarot for. Yes. So I mentioned a few of the things. So we have regular divination, which is what you already saw uh, just now. 
the typical oh how's my day gonna go or how is the future gonna go you can even have more elaborate spreads which is like how i said earlier how you have one two three cards here each card which is which with its own meaning and you can of course have multiple and bigger ones one of the most famous examples is the celtic cross which is a fun one. I have tried it a few times. But I will try it today again. And it's fun. But then you also have shadow work, which I feel like you use that intertwined with divination, because a lot of it a lot of the questions you ask, usually the answers will be somewhere in your subconscious self, which is what shadow work is about. Shadow work is about tapping into your unconscious. Things you worry about, things you hope for that you may not know that you are thinking. Or like how you feel about a certain situation. Because you can also use cards just for simple questions, I guess, or no questions. I know there are some patterns some people made with it. If it's a sword, it's a yes. If it's a wand, it's a no. I haven't tried that yet. I usually like to figure it out based on the meaning of the cards. And yes, then also said communication with the gods or another spirit around you. So I haven't actually tried this one yet. But I think it's also best to do it in private, maybe not on stream. Yeah, I don't think some entities would like to, you know, talk to you in the- Who knows, maybe, maybe I will find an entity who wants to collab on stream. <laughs> I mean, it seems to be me, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I have an entity with me right now. Hmm. They go, Shedzy, give me, give me a sign. She just slaps you to death cards. Ah, yes, there she is. <laughs> uh, I'm like a bad omen whenever you, then someone's around me to just pull death cards. <laughs> I mean, it sometimes death. feels I mean... like it. Uh, I had, uh, when I first got my deck, uh, I was like at the studio and there's someone there who actually uh, studied for like divination. Ooh, I didn't know you could study. For Apparently it. so. Um, Damn, I got to look that uh, up later. She uh, she did a reading with my cards for me, and guess what popped up the death card. <laughs> I was like, oh hey, I'm fitting for you. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, you're not the only one who seems to have a pop-up list. <laughs> well, yeah, honestly, when I got my cast, I was more prepared to constantly get towers thrown at me. I'm surprised it hasn't happened that much. What cards do I usually get off them? I can't remember. I know I get a lot of cups and pentacles off them. Don't know what that means. I seem to I mean. pull Major Arcana pretty often. <laughs> I've had the two lately though, because I am noting down all of my triple spreads, because I got the little journal for it. And I noticed, huh, I'm pulling a lot more Major Arcana than I thought. For a while I also had this funny pattern of the first two cards are the right way up, and then the last card is upside down. Hmm. The cards are trying to tell you something. Probably. Maybe. They have predicted my uncontrollable vomit, at least. <laughs> <laughs> we already nailed that. The cards just confounded. But the deity leg. Um. So basically, in theory, based. You, all you have to do is, while you shuffle the cards, you focus on trying to take up communication with something or someone. Maybe you can even aim for a specific person or deity and see if they throw you something. Or if they just decided to 
yeet your whole deck at you, that has worked for some people. <laughs> but when you do work with gods, you have to be a bit careful for tricksters and mimics, because they like to prank you and, you know, pretend like they're the deities you want to work with. But oh well, I haven't run into that trouble yet. So, what have we covered? We've covered a very small bit of history on it. We've covered the usage of it. Mm, and I can get a bit more to spread leader. I mean, I have already explained it. Shall we go for the cards? Uh, another thing, actually, that um, like that person uh, like mentioned is that you usually you want to like uh like burn a candle for protection right yes that is for stuff taking up communication black candles work best for protection yeah there's probably also some scents that also work but i just know black candles are good for protection <laughs> good fits my aesthetic <laughs> <laughs> Just surrounding yourself with black candles to feel protected. It's like, what do you need that much protection for? Oh no, I just like the color. <laughs> I can just imagine you and Lego meet up for the first time and he asked if you got protection, you just whip out the black <laughs> candle. <laughs> you bet I did! <laughs> <laughs> have a black candle prepared or you bring it with you. I, I don't know uh, what the plans are, who is visiting who. Uh, Allegro is currently attempting to come over here. And you must prepare the candles. <laughs> <laughs> Romantic. <laughs> Like, oh, what's this candle for? Protection, obviously. Oh, <laughs> uh, this is such a good one. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, like I said, vanilla also really works great for that. <laughs> and strawberry. Uh, I forgot some other foods. Chocolate, too. Chocolate? Really? Yes. Chocolate also makes you hobby. I know there's actually a specific chocolate out there from a specific brand that is uh, supposedly it makes you horny as shit. I'm tempted to get one. Hmm. So hey, no, no, <laughs> what a great timing to join the stream. <laughs> <laughs> I swear the stream is about talent. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, this totally is a terror stream. It's talking about how to get a horby. <laughs> to, to be fair, I was talking about cattle magic at first. Uh... It is what it is. This happens. Yeah. Hey. All right. Cards revealed. Let's see. I have sorted these, so these should be in order. So first we have Zafur. Oh, eh. I'm, not, I'm not used to this camera. Come on, focus. Focus. Zafur hold my hand like I'm there. Will that help? Maybe? A little bit? Oh, well, you can see it. This, uh, the art of this deck is just based off the... Original tarot deck. It's basically the same tarot art, but it's like pink and has metallic thing on it. The side is also shiny, as you can see. So we have the Fool. Also, the first card also marked with a zero, which you can't see because it's so shiny. <laughs> All the major arcanas have a number, usually Roman numerals on it. To just kind of know where they are in the deck, because 
they have a specific order, just like how Ace to King has a specific order. So we start off with the fool. Now what do you what do you think of when you think about a foolish person? You're it's one of the easier cards to interpret. Yeah, usually on wise decisions, right? Yes, a fool is a child, basically. They are very curious. They want to go on an adventure. They don't know much, though, so they can also run into danger. So usually, when you have it the right way up, it's usually the more positive sides, the curiosity, like the longing of going on an adventure, the innocence, that's also a very prominent figure. Blissful upside down, ignorance. it's more... That too. Oh, that would be the upside down meaning more. That would be like some of the bad aspects of the fool. They're like kind of running into dangerous situation, not knowing any better. Things like that. That is the full one of the easier cards to interpret. Anyways, let's put, let's put the cards over here we already got. Now we have the Magician! Magician's Red! There we go. Has a little infinity symbol on top of the head. Marked with a one. Has a wand. And as you can see on the table, there is a pentacle, a cup, a sword, and a wand, which is very important. You already looked a bit into witchcraft, so you know about these things, do you? Why they're important? Yeah, basics. Basics, basic. yeah. They are very basics, yes. These are the four elements. Obviously, you have the cups, which represents water. You have the pentacle, which is earth. You have the swords that is for air and the ones that is for fire. This will be relevant later again, when we get to the uh, minor arcanas. I'm so tempted to always call them the little arcanas. Only the little bubbles. Yeah, because like in, in German, you call them the big arcanas and the small arcanas, so my brain is speed translating it. I'm like, oh yeah, little. Yeah, they're the little arcanas. They're small, the baby. The baby They're arcanas. minus. <laughs> yes, baby arcanas. So the magician. The magician is... It can be a bit tougher, but once you know the meaning of it, it's easier to understand. So the Magician is a card of creation. The Magician creates stuff. It does stuff. It is creative. He's creating stuff. Like an artist, basically. An artist's best friend. Yes! So if you ever have, like, a blockade or something, you can always look for this card. I've also seen some people use tarot cards less to like in a spread but more like oh if you have like a creative block just look for the magician in your deck and see what's the card in front of it that is what's blocking you those mm -hmm. kind of things that's usually also interesting to try so you don't always have to like place cards you can also just look for cards and see what might be blocking you you know, I will, I will suggest shuffling them first, and yeah. maybe. Of course, the opposite side, if it's upside down, will of course be said creative black. When you can't create stuff. When you can't think of anything to create. These kind of things. should also mention that even though cards have certain meanings, they can also drastically change depending on other cards surrounding in, in a spread, for instance, or in certain contexts. Which can be especially confusing in the three card spread, the daily spread, with the, the vibe, the event, and something to avoid. Because sometimes you have... Something to avoid, and it's a relatively good card, and you have something to look forward to, something good happening, and it's a bad card, which is confusing at first. We have 
a bit more to read into now. But it might change. But yes, that was the magician. Now we have dun 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 The High Priestess. Ah yes. Very pretty card. Very mysterious. The High Priestess is also a witch's best friend, like the Magician. Because the High Priestess is all about the truth and mysteries, while uncovering mysteries, understanding things. These sort of stuff. So like, if you have a loss for answers, you look for the High Priestess, basically. So the opposite side, of course, also means, well, clash the opposite. <laughs> yeah. I am good at this, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, it means being at a loss for answers or not being able to uncover the truth. Maybe there's still some things blocking the way to learning the truth. Or maybe it's better to keep the truth hidden. Things like that. If I see this card, I usually think about truth. I mean, with certain cards, with certain cards, it's easier to imagine them as people. Other cards is easier to maybe have one word to like sum it up mostly. And you can still have multiple words, but like one word that you, that pops up in your mind as soon as you see it. It's usually how it helps me. And from there on, you can still think, okay, this card means truth. What else can it mean in this context? That was the High Priestess. Now we have... Dun, 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 the Empress, which we've already heard about today. <laughs> Look at her, look how pretty, and it's so blurry. Come on, focus on the Empress. Come on, All focus eyes on, on the my lady. Now. Yes. A beautiful lady. Oh sorry, I I I completely forgot to check chat in a while. Am I enjoying the new deck? I haven't tried it out yet. I have kept it like this since I got it, so I don't have to resort the cards again. <laughs> but I'll use it today. I'll use it later once I get through all the cards. So the Empress, like I said earlier, it's it's like a mother card. It is a card that is nurturing you. It is warm. It's taking care of you. It is trying to make you healthy when you feel weak. It's trying to guide you maybe to something. Like how you usually will depict the mother. Maybe you can also think of it as Mother Nature, for example. If the context of like a human mother doesn't make sense in certain contexts. And like the opposite side of it could mean like an absent mother or a bad mother, I guess you could say. Someone who doesn't look at your needs. Someone who neglects it, maybe. Like you feel cold, you feel helpless. Like a little infant out in the cold. That was the Empress. Now, after the Empress, we have, of course, dun dun dun, the Emperor. Oh. Over. Oh, it, it focused on us for a second. <laughs> Come on. The Emperor. Oh, but like I said, the art is based on the traditional tarot deck anyway, so you can probably find his images really easily. With color. This one doesn't have color. But yes, the Emperor. Marked with the full on top, but it's actually the fifth card. So like I said, the Empress is the mother, therefore the Emperor is the father. So this can be a bit confusing. 
I'm not confusing, but like, what's the difference between a mother and a father? Like I said, a mother typically, I imagine, more nurturing, while a father may be more defensive. They can still do, they can still give you the same vibe, but he's also more assertive. So while you, the mother maybe takes care of you, the father will try to eliminate any threat that may harm you. Try to make sure that nothing can hurt you anymore. Or perhaps it could... guide or teach you to be stronger, I guess, as well, right? Yes, that too. He protect, yes. Mimi, that's basically you. <laughs> he is the father. <clears throat> Dog father. <laughs> Petition to remake the godfather but call it the dark father instead <laughs> mimi plays every role <laughs> it's me the emperor is the dada get the book you want a kiss <laughs> i can kiss you <laughs> the emperor. That's a father. Of course, the opposite side is like with the mother. It's an absent father. He went out to grab some milk. He went Don't out to grab some cigarettes. Us. Yeah. It may be someone who's also who may be more abusive to you. Maybe not physical, maybe more mentally, maybe both. Who knows? It could be a very uncomfortable character. Well, the Emperor usually may teach you how to rule, how to be in control. The opposite could be to try to put you into control, put you into submission. But yeah, everything has its good sides and bad sides. This was the Emperor. Now after the Emperor dun dun dun... Is the Hero Fans! Fan. I feel like the main word with this one is balance. It's really most of what I get from it. Of not taking too much, not giving too much. About having enough time for yourself and enough time for other people. It's a whole yin yang kind of stuff. Work life balance. It's a Wii balance board, exactly. <laughs> it's the Wii balance board. It is fucking Wii bar. <laughs> but yeah, there are probably a lot of ways you can interpret this card, especially with different contexts and different cards around. Like if you have, like next to it, something else maybe it's in between two cards it can be an imbalance in those two cards for instance of course the opposite is also pretty self-explanatory that is the lack of balance that is one of the easier cards once you know the hero fan is all about balance then you know <laughs> everything to beat boo we go, that was the hero thing. Now we have dum 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 The Lovers Is artistic nudity still a thing on Twitch? Uh not Look, it's really. not my fault It's not my fault people in the fourteen fifties were cool with tits out. Anyways <laughs> What's what's I mean me? You see the lovers? It does? Yes, it does. <laughs> look, you're naked, Mimi. Look! Ooh. You pulled your cock out! I've got the courage. <laughs> but you lovers! No one can deflect the emerald's flesh. <laughs> exactly! Except for everyone does! Oh boy. Wait, we But we are last at the lovers. Also, another. Very self-explanatory card. It is... It doesn't always mean love, but it does signify relationships. 
And it can also mean people... Well, it can also be more like a love, but less romantic love. More like friendships, family, maybe even work. Sorry, I just got really confused about this chat message. The chat message? Do, do we need to bonk someone? Will you fight for Christ in combat? But I don't even know what, what you're asking of me. Is it YouTube or Twitch? YouTube. Yeah, that sounds like a YouTube yeah. comment. <laughs> Why is streaming on YouTube so weird? I don't know. Average YouTube comment? Yeah, uh... Yeah. YouTube is weird. <laughs> little Timmy got the iPad. Either little Timmy or I just... They're trying to pull me into a cult or something. I mean, we're already part of a cult, so... Yeah, I have my own cult, actually. Maybe we can convert them to our cult. Join the cult. Join the cult. Join the, the cult. apocalypse. Join the cult. Get in. <laughs> get in the blender. <laughs> no, get in the cage, actually. Oh, yeah, the blender's for the bad souls. Yeah. As you say, for the soon. default... The default container is cage. Yeah. When you go soul, you get in the cage. If you're in a bathroom, you get in the blender. What if I am a medium soul? Mm. What if I'm morally gray? <laughs> Still cage. Just not hey. that great one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I I Can you have like a yeah. mixture between a blender and a cage? I don't know, I could put razor blades in your cage. <laughs> Maybe you'd enjoy that. I don't know what I would enjoy anymore. Why not? A little bit of knife play, why not? Just to keep things interesting. Mm. We have enough black candles, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still thinking about it when Lego comes? <laughs> Getting out the black candles? <laughs> Gotta put your soul in the blender for my protein shake. Uh, for context, uh, <laughs> for the people that weren't here earlier, um, we were talking about, like, uh, like, candle uh, magic. Like you're using tarot for communication. You want to burn a candle for protection. He said it would be black candles. And Felita was like, I can just picture Lego coming over. And then he got protection and just pull out the black candles. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Please do that. Please tell me what his re reaction was afterwards. <laughs> Just full of black candles. <laughs> and then I have to painstakingly light them one by one. <laughs> like to the point is increasing the room temperature to get the room might as well just be on fire. <laughs> just telling me she'll visit during the winter when it's cold anyways. <laughs> yeah, that was that's what we were laughing about. <laughs> YouTube now you must have adapted his live section. Adapt. Adapt. Adapt these notes. I haven't really had YouTube mods in here for a while, so uh, there might be a couple of kids running loose. <laughs> I'm not used to monitoring YouTube. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I Songo was there for a while and then hasn't showed up in a bit, so... Hey, song we got busy. Hold up, let me pull up your YouTube stream. I guess fine to deal with because usually I just like if a uh, like I just don't really interact with the the YouTube chat that much usually. <laughs> that is fast, understandable. It's like half of the time it's just like hi, I will subscribe, and then they vanish. Yeah, but Twitch can also be like that. Mm. 
Like with YouTube, they will actually announce it. They're like subscribing because like half the time the, the notification on us aren't on for that because they uh, have it off that people can see who they subscribe yeah. to. So they like, the bath announce it instead. Which is absolutely fine, but just like if you get this person and the just goes high, has like emoji spam, and then this goes, I will subscribe. I just start to wonder of what age they actually are. Does this age have double digits? <laughs> yeah. I also just kind of look at the names. What if it's pee pee poo poo? Some of them are like well, nonsense names, and then like some of them are just like th there was just like the, this this person last time. It was like Mrs. Something, so it's just like either that's a kid on their parents' account, or I just like ran into like a teacher or something. And I'm just, that will like, be really weird. Here. Why are you here? I am a shadow OC. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you're, uh, <laughs> you're emulating my YouTube chat pretty well. <laughs> uh... Gee. I completely forgot I was being titled. Um, yeah. The Lovers! Yes! <laughs> yeah, ask Kamadalia, yes, relationships. How many in a relationship? It's just basically a healthy relationship, whether it is romantic or platonic or anything else, really. Of course, upside down, it is the toxic kind of relationship or like a bad one, one that's falling apart. Maybe it's signifying a red flag in someone. Oh, put your voice. Or something. I don't know where my voice just went. <laughs> I think it's time for safety. Give me a moment. <laughs> Among us, sussy baka. Uh, uh. Uh. That is just my normal dialogue. What are you implying? Yeah, you're a YouTube chatter. Apparently. I mean, I have this one co worker. Whenever we talk, it sounds like we are just two YouTube kids. In some random live stream. <laughs> like just regular conversation. It's just like Among Us. I mean, that's pretty based though. Yeah. But yeah, that was the lovers. Maybe I should keep going. We still have we still have a lot to go through. No, At least the, the, the minor arcanas. The minor arcanas I'll speed through because they have a bit of a pattern. Yeah, I can talk like, about it. Like, they have, like, their general overarching meaning, and then, like, the individual cards have, like, their, uh, like, slight variations on that meaning, right? Yeah. You have a basic, yeah, you have, like, the four colors, which corresponds to a certain element, and you have the colors, well, not the colors, the, the numbers that also represent different stages. Like I probably will explain later, you can also imagine them as a story. But yes, then you also have the court cards, which are also pretty... They in a way, once you get them, it, they're understandable, but getting the nuances of them right can be a bit difficult. Because at first, maybe they all sound the same. But not really. Anyways, next up is... Dun 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 dun! The chariot. chariot! Chariot! To Sphinx down there. I never actually really looked at the original tarot You can see the Fulton art for a second? Yeah, of course. So, we have the chariot. This is what Another card that is pretty... Pretty self-explanatory. So, the chariot obviously is like a vehicle. It takes you to places, aka adventures, right? So, the chariot is all about going on a journey, embarking on a new adventure, finding new ways, progressing something. All of these things of moving something forward. 
of going to do something. It is about action. The chariot is about taking action. So obviously, the other meaning of it upside down is the hesitation. It is like you are unsure of things or you want to plan things out more. You are not ready yet to take action, to embark on a new journey thing. It can be something bad, it can also just mean you're not ready yet. I mean, all the cards, even when you say, oh yeah, this card usually has a bad meaning, like I said, in context, it doesn't have to be. But yeah, what's the chariot? Another easy to understand card. Next up is da 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 dum Strength! I think the strength is obviously the easiest card to understand, even easier than the fool. <laughs> it is it is the poor concept of strength, of power. When you think of a word for this card, it, it, it's strength. Yeah. <laughs> it can be physical strength, it can be your mental strength, it can be your willpower, it also means your pride. Things like that. Maybe also something you are good at, something you can you consider your strength. Maybe you consider your greatest strength is your creativity. It can also mean your creativity. These kind of things. Also, hey Holly, how it going? How you doing? It's about drive, it's about power. <laughs> exactly. It's about slaying your enemy. But yeah, and obviously Opposite of strength is going to be your weakness, or maybe your strength getting in the way, your pride getting into the way. You know, the pride is not so important in this one. We have another card that, is, that has pride on its main front. But yeah. You're doing fine. It's good to hear. Hope the week went well. Hope you had a nice week. Yes, we got strength out of the way. Easiest card in the whole deck to understand. Now we have dun 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 the helmet. The helmet. Like me, for real, for real. But yes, the helmet is also one of the more. I guess self-explanatory. When you think of a helmet, do you also think of someone who is who profess to be alone, an introvert kind of thing? Yeah, shouldn't. Yeah. Basically. Someone Basically, who... yeah. Like, oh, they're like a hermit crab. Exactly, who, like a hermit crab. Kind of lives crab. in their own, their own shell and doesn't really go out or want to interact with people. Yes, that is basically the core concept of the helmet. <laughs> Someone who's very Timmy watching your stream and scream at every so often. Your child is watching gay porn. <laughs> yeah, I know. It it's needs just... more black candles. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I know. I know that you can do stuff like that, but it's just like I don't know. No. The helmet is a very introverted card. It's not like just only shut in, it's also someone who is... who looks into themselves a lot. They like to self-reflect a lot, because they are always on their own, right? So they think about themselves a lot. They also may know a lot of things. But yeah, this is a card that is basically your unconscious self. Maybe the self you don't know much about, but they know a lot about themselves. Basically. The opposite of it, I interpret more as the bad thing of being a shut-in. Like, actually shunning human connections too much, or having too much alone time. Like, I am hella introverted, but even I... I can go extremely long without talking to someone, but even I reach a point where I'm like, I want to talk to someone. The... Like, it doesn't have to be going out or someone it can just be chatting on Discord. Like, I get bored and I, like, hit someone up from the Lazaga to vibe with. Like, when Mimi isn't around the cell. 
And maybe he's a dog. But yeah, that is the helmet. Now we have... Dun dun dun! <gasps> it goes up, it goes down! It is the Wheel of Fortune! Spin the wheel! Spin the wheel! <laughs> Jesus, take the wheel! Not that wheel! Yes! <laughs> Not <Long> wheel! <laughs> Not wheel, Jesus! <laughs> wheel me in, Jesus! <laughs> Take the wheel, not wheel me into the hospital. Free ambulance, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Driving you straight to the nearest hospital. Imagine Jesus takes the wheel and you will end up in a psych ward. That would be a mood. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh boy. Anyways, Jesus aside, we have the Wheel of Fortune. Which, as it brings in its name, it brings fortune. Or not. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> so, there are... Fortune. I don't know, maybe. Probably not. Yeah. I mean, from what I've seen, typically... People associate, if the card is the right way up, it's a good fortune. If it's the other way, uh, if it's upside down, it's a bad fortune. Yeah. That's how I see most people interpret it, basically. Very simple. I've also, I forgot to mention this earlier, but while I do the thing of like cards have different meanings, whether they're upside down or not, it, it doesn't have to be. There are also some people who read the cards and they don't differentiate. Like, they probably never shuffle their cards to be upside down. They just take both uh, both meanings as an option. Yeah, or if you have a, a deck like mine where you can easily see on the back side if it's going to be regular side up or upside down, you can just yeah. and ignore that. Yeah. No, I just saw some people prefer that kind of way of reading cards. So if you're, like, still new and you want to try to get into it, you can try both ways like you want to interpret the cards uh ignoring if it's upside down or not and having both meanings as an option for the reading or do you want to have the uh meaning depends on which way the card is i mean neither is wrong you can't do much wrong in divination most of it is kind of gut feeling and you'll still learn with it yeah Back when you made cross buns for the first time? Wait, did you make the ones I did yesterday? Wait, what kind of cross buns? Oh boy. Which one do we have now? Dun 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 dun! Justice! Justice. Not to be confused with judgment, which is also in the deck, but there are some nuances to it. Which can be a bit confusing when you have justice and you have judgment. So let's focus on justice for now. And like I said, my mom saw a bit of your stream and wanted to try some. So to die, I made it for the first time. Oh my god, show me! Did yours also deflate? Did you take the same recipe I had? I mean, if you wanted it, I could have sent you the recipe. Even though you might would have to adjust it, like Mimi said, the milk-sugar mixture on top was a bit off. And I don't know why it was so fragile that it deflated so much. What the fuck have you done to this picture? Why does it look like that? Why is it so blurry? It's Did the you... ghost of Christmas past. Did you paint this on a potato? <laughs> Damn. Did, you... Did you put the milk sugar mixture on it before you baked it? They look a lot less like cum. Hey, by the way, I'm gonna... I have to set my own tea today, so I'm gonna be gone for a little bit longer. I'm an 
this fun. So yeah, uh, yeah that was... I was left alone here. My parents went to a birthday without me. That's fine. Then, like did you that. did you want to go to the birthday no, or did you? No, fine. Uh, I was like, I'm gonna be too tired and I'm on a stream, so just to hop on over. I mean, like, the, the card is, like, something made by me, and I helped pick out, uh, like, a little flower gift, so I, con oh. I contributed enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because That's without it, you have to set my own tea, so I will be, um, back in a bit. Just okay. keep on chatting in the meantime. Yeah, yeah, I keep going for the card. Is he supposed to put the jizz before you bake the recipe? He didn't say that. Oh, well, I know for next time. I mean, it still tastes good. I've, I've had some for dinner. I also ate some as a snack. They're really good if you put some Nutella on them. I like, cut up some slices, put Nutella on it. Oh my god, it's tasty as fuck. She'll try some. I mean, the recipe is mainly for Ostera, but I guess I can also do it for Easter. I'll try them again. But your sudden deflate as much. How long did you let them rest? Did you let them rest for an hour or for two? Yeah, this looks way less blurry. I still hated that you took a chunk from the middle. <laughs> Why? Why take a middle piece first? Oh well, you are hungry. It's not that you've taken a piece, it's the issue, it's just so random. I'll try them again soon. When is Easter actually? You made it from a Google website? I should probably try it from a different website next time too. So that's what I wanted to look at. What even is considered Easter? Oh, it's on Sunday. Mm. Do I have anything for the Sunday? Because I know this Sunday is full moon. I have stuff planned for this Sunday. Which means next Sunday. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be half moon yet. Just instead of raisins, I use semi-sweet chocolate chips. Yeah, that's also something good. I might also try that, because I also left out the raisins, because raisins, ew. I don't like them. I don't put them in stuff, because I won't eat it then. Very fast. I don't think I have anything for that day. I might try it. Well, it's going to be a Saturday. But I don't think I will stream it again. Because I felt like maybe the stream was a bit boring. If I can see my monster can just vibe in. <laughs> if they turn out well, I'll probably post about them. Yeah. I really, I really want to try them. So the glass, it's a mixture of honey, maple syrup, and water. I can see that they're a lot different consistency. I was thinking about adding honey to it somehow. But yeah, maybe next time there will be more of a success. Oh well, that was it. I was at justice. Like I said, this can be a bit nuanced with judgment, but let's focus on justice. Justice is like the judge, basically. Um, maybe not so much the judge. It's more like the person who, um. They call enforces justice, right? Someone who oversees it and acts upon it. Hello, you have returned. Did you get your E? Yes, I have my E. Nice. I have your <coughs> E. I have. I haven't made any progress. I got distracted by show. Apparently, my stream yesterday inspired his mom to also make hot crossbuns. 
based. You send me the website later? Yes, do it. I want to try them again. Maybe I can try it for next year, Astara. Oh well, we always have the next celebration, the next thing. Yeah. We're just gonna be Berdane! One of the hornier festivities. Oh. Well, it's not horny. It is celebrating fertility and love. And some of the typically activities you do is also very much couple themed, couple oriented. But there are some wow. cute ones in there. It's mainly celebrating, while well, Ostara was celebrating the beginning of spring. Uh, this one is focusing also more on becoming a lot more warm. Plants growing into full bloom. All that stuff. Who said you need to make them on a celebration? I never said you need to make them on a celebration. I just like to uh, have something to show. But I just kind of feel like it. I still have some left. I We ate over half of what I made yesterday, but we still have some left. Oh, really? I'll probably give some to my grandma. Oh, they're really good. Uh, if you put some something sweet on it, like Nutella or chocolate, it's so good. Mm -hmm. It sounds really soft, but it's very crumbly. So I'll try out a different recipe for next time. <coughs> I can but always you just get the, the book as well and see if uh, I make them, if they turn on any different for me. You can try to, but the recipe is weird. It's like Mimi said, the milk sugar mixture they described in the book was completely off. Like, you can't make uh, this kind of uh, sugar coating with these ingredients, just not in that, uh, like, how much you add to it, the quantity. And also, some steps are just written in such a weird order like you have step one preheat the oven step two wait for like three hours wait for like two hours for the yeast to do its thing like why preheat the oven that early already then yeah. and also apparently the the milk sugar mixture is supposed to do it before baking it and not after which the book also never said it said to do it after but he like you may have to modify the recipe a bit. Yeah. Maybe you can also find out why the dough was so fragile. Like it puffed up so much, but as soon as I put the egg wash on, it was just flat. It came out flat like my dress. Oh well. Maybe you're supposed to wash it before uh, you let it But dry. then the egg will dry out. I was mm -hmm. thinking that too. Maybe like halfway through, so that afterwards it has some time to puff up again. Okay. Will you do a tarot reading for me and someone else? I'll do tarot readings at the end of uh, explaining all the cards and such as examples. Well, so mint sugar, it's milk and flour. Then. What? Hmm? Oh, yeah, true, you can. If you want to. It would make I mean, so much more sense, at least for it, consistency. But... Yeah, if you want an instant tarot uh, reading, you should check out Shedzi's Shedzi stream. She is going live right now. I'm drawing right now, but you can always redeem me. Uh... Let me do a funny, funny little shout out. Of well, is Pluty making uh, hot cross buns? Having a hard time hearing hey, you Pat. over Pluty? Um... Yeah, I told you your thingy was getting... Oh, you're not in chat, so I have to spell out your name. Oh no, this is gonna be bad. I am in chat, though. I know, when the title it didn't work, it's fine. I oh, can just reload. type it Sometimes in. Sometimes it breaks and it doesn't recognize me in the chat. Right now. That's fine, I can spell out your name. Yeah, I did it! Hmm. 
And you want a single cat reading? Mimi's day for tomorrow. Like I said, I'll do it at the end of it. I want to use these cards, but they're all sorted right now. Well, isn't Mimi wants a reading from me? Yes. Like I said, you should... If you are interested in having the reading right now and not later, check out. Go, go, to, go to her stream. Go to she me. has a reading. Solid? Wait, what are we doing? Solids? Solid hair? What? Okay, let's, let's continue. Still haven't even gotten over the major arcanas. Justice, like I said, it's the person who enforces the justice. Maybe even passes it on. So, the opposite of force is my, uh, my volume so that's better. Because for some reason In my the... mic isn't as loud as it used to be. Maybe some settings. Do you have any sort of filters, noise suppression, anything like that? Uh, I do have filters, but I didn't change them, and all of a sudden people are complaining that uh, I'm not as loud anymore. It might be a Windows thing, because a while back they broke um, the gain on Windows. So I have to turn my mic down a lot. Like, in yeah. Windows itself, maybe I can turn it back off now and it's fine. Because, like, I sounded like I had a funny mic for s Like, I sounded like I had a funny mic for so long because all of a sudden, like, if you were... Like, not even at 100%, it was at, like, 75 and it sounded like I had just boosted the gain to, like, 200. <laughs> so, like, Sound I like turned it down a lot, but microphone. now it seems like I might have to turn it back because they might have changed it to fix it? Maybe, because I remember the thing was like last week when you played Bloon with like Draco and such, I also noticed that you were a lot quieter in comparison to Draco, for example. Well, also that like my, also my OBS decided to for some reason turn my mic um Unless you're... No, you are in the right... You are in the right one. Yeah. Um... Yeah. So I have most of these in their basic settings, so I don't know why it would be making me quieter. Well, it did turn me down all the way that one time, but now it shouldn't. Um, hold on. Uh, is the slide on OBS also all the way on the top? I mean, you can maybe also add a boost to you on OBS. Yeah, because I don't sound any quieter on Discord, do I? I mean, I, pu I made you a bit louder again, so I can hear you just fine. I haven't really noticed if you sounded too quieter than usual. Uh, hold on, let me add... Then again, my ears are pretty bad, so that doesn't mean much. Plus, I adjust a lot of the okay, audio on the fly. Um, I don't know how much to add. If you to it out, let me see. know when to stop. How far does the, the audio bound OBS go? Now it's going into the red again, so I think that should be fine. Yeah? Yeah. Probably. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I don't remember having gain on it before, or unless I did have that on there and it just removed it for some reason. I don't know, it's weird. Weird. I can check my notes because I had. No, I didn't have anything on there. Weird. Weird. You know, while well, you fix that, I'll, I'll finally continue so we can get the uh, get through the deck already. Yeah. Um. Chat, let me know how it sounds now. So, basically, justice, like I said, it is 
The personification of justice, pretty easy to understand. Having it the wrong side up means injustice. Maybe someone doing you wrong. Maybe someone lying about something they did. Covering up a crime or something. Things like these. But yes, okay, justice aside. Let's move on. To dun dun dun, the funny, the one and only. Hang the man. This card is not upside down. This is how you're supposed to hang. Just hanging around. The hanged man maybe sounds scary. Or well, maybe it also looks scary. But it's really not. It is more like... Preventing. I mean, look at him. He's just vibing there. He's dangling down. He's just thinking about stuff. He's contemplating. It is similar to the helmet, but it's more like he wants to prevent something from happening. Maybe he knows something is going on and he's trying to stop it, he's trying to think on it. So this is all about stopping something. Throwing out probably the inevitable. Or maybe it is changeable, who knows. Of course, the other way around, it is more like procrastination. Or like really trying to avoid something really big, unsuccessfully. Something that you maybe shouldn't avoid. Basically, procrastination. That is the hanged man. Now we got... Dun dun dun! Oh my god, Shenzi, it's you! Oh, it's me! It's you! Look at that! It's that! <laughs> what is my voice? <laughs> oh no, I killed you! Down, casually taking the voice. Yes, after the hanged man, we got death. If you have a, if you have tried to tap anything into Tarot, you know that death is not a scary or bad card at all. It sounds scary, because it's fucking death, right? But it's not. Just like Shedzi is a little baby. What? I call you Baba. How dare you? I mean, look at you. Such a baby. <laughs> did you just try to hiss? What have I did? Hey! <laughs> I have two silly boys with me. A hiss is not gonna stop me. Uh... <laughs> but yeah, back to the death card. Do you want to explain it since it's your card, technically? Um, if you don't want it, can they can do it? I mean, the death card usually stands for like a, uh, like a big change, right? Yes, death is it is the death of something. It's like one door opening, so another can, uh, one door closing, so another one can open. It is the death of one thing, so another thing can be reborn. Basically, you can think of death in a death. The yeah. beginning of something new. Maybe something akin to rebirth, maybe even. And the opposite of it, it can be the lack of change. It can be maybe you are stuck in a situation you wish it will change. Maybe it can also be something is forcefully changed that you don't want to, actually. Maybe you are fine with things as they are. And yet it still happens. But yes, this is death. A lot less scarier when you know what it means. Now, next card. Dun dun dun! Temperance! Temperance. Temperance. Temperance is a card I also kind of struggle with some. 
the main word I usually associate with this card is tradition. The old ways. How things always used to be and continue to be. Like the circle of life. Things happening in nature. Things like that. So I just noticed something on what, this card. I don't notice? know if it's intentional or not, but can it be that it has the symbol of fire on its chest? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, yeah. it's a triangle. That can mean anything. I just <laughs> associate it with fire. Illuminati. <laughs> really Illuminati. I mean, you've seen, you have seen probably how the elements are uh, usually sometimes as represented as triangles. Yeah. yeah. You have like two triangles that go up and two that go down, and like one has like a line in the middle. Yeah. That is how you can just easily write down a symbol for the element. And a triangle like this without a line represents fire. If it had a line in the middle, it would be air. If the triangle is go points down, it's water. If it points down and has a line in it, it's air. I feel like it's that's one of the things also a bit easier to remember. Oh well, temperance. The opposite side of it will be maybe the loss of tradition, maybe a change to Society to its norm, maybe something, a human change. Because while nature doesn't change as much, while it has its season and all, humans tend to temper with it a lot. But it can also mean this. When outside force disturbing things. It can be a bit... Compared to the hero fent in a way. I usually, I sometimes confuse those two. I don't draw them as much. Difficult to see them as persons unlike the others. Mm, oh, well. I've gotten the hero fend a lot, I guess. Or at least it's most memorable for me because I usually did, like I just look at the card for a second. Like, how do I pronounce this again? I. I hate how I, I I see temperance and the first thing I think of is Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> I draw it so rarely usually. I've drawn it so often when I did the Arcana deck with Jesse and I remember temperance. I didn't know what the fuck temperance did until I wasted all of them and I'm like, oh, it's like tanking. It's tanking the hits I'll usually take. I can't hear you defend and not think of Kakuin from Jojo. I mean, that's, ha that's literally all of the major arcanas for me, though. <laughs> it's like, oh, look, the, the god, Zavaldo! <laughs> I don't think I've ever drawn that card and said the world. It's always Zavaldo. <laughs> like, even when it jumped out yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Just the way it fell out. Like, hello there. <laughs> God, it's still funny. <laughs> it's still funny. You drew the tower, wasn't it upside down? And then my deck tossed the tower at me. And I'm like, hello? I, it, could, it could probably be. And I was like, Palette hello? What do you want from me? <laughs> it's a message from the angel. The tower. No one can deflect the emerald splash. Exactly. <laughs> Anyways, we got the next card. Just as scary as that. Dun dun dun! It's the devil! Yay, the card I'm personally connected to. Seemingly. The devil. It's even doing. It's not really doing the. So above. Uh, so above, so below pose, but similar to it. Okay, so maybe <laughs> just like with the lava card, you have like I think it's supposed to be like Adam and Eve, I'm not sure. Uh, hey Shadow, it's Polygon. me, the devil from the Bible. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember Because <laughs> everyone does cook you and everyone, it do be like that. Yeah. The devil. I feel like that's also a very self explanatory thing. 
even like if you're not into Christianity, the you probably know the devil. It's a it's a card about your sins. It's a card about a hell cycle. It's a card about pride. Which is why I said earlier that pride isn't as important in strength as it's in this card. So this one can also be like your ego. Maybe, like I said, your sins, maybe you are envious or something. You can kind of connect it to the classic seven deadly sins if you want to, but it you can also take a lot broader of a interpretation of it, of what you consider a sin. Maybe a sinful thought. There's a little call out. The opposite could be of breaking free of said hell circle. So maybe putting your ego to rest. Maybe, maybe you don't have enough. Sometimes you, sometimes it's good to have pride, but not too much. So it's like you have the right amount. Up, the, uh, the right way up it would be like, you know, you, you have too much. You're too full of yourself. Calm your tits. <laughs> it's getting too good. It is the Stop. devil. <laughs> yeah. You're letting the After power the get devil. to your head. You must stop now. <laughs> Speaking of the tower, dun dun dun! The tower! Fittingly after the devil. You can actually also think about uh, the major arcanas like going through them as a story. So we have the devil, it's kind of like doing a funky deal with you. And then the tower, which is the most dreaded cards of all for most people. <coughs> So the tower is similar to death, a drastic change, but not a good one, not a welcome one. It's a drastic one that will leave you stranded, that maybe tear things apart. Generally a bad omen. Generally this card overall. Funnily enough, whenever I try to find the opposite definition, like, if it's upside down, I still get the same definitions. Like, the, the tower is just overall bad. No matter what way it's up, apparently. But it's apparently even worse if it's upside down. But this is... Just like death is a card of change, this is a card of drastic change, of an uncomfortable change. Like, being thrown all over the place. This is not a door uh, closing so a door can open. This is just a door getting absolute slammed into your face, telling you to fuck off. Basically. Ah, so most of what happens in my life. Seemingly. The door is kicking in itself. That sounds like Jesse, though. <laughs> The amount of doors she kicks in D and D, oh boy! But yeah, there's a tower. Some of the most dreaded has. I mean, like I said, you can probably still draw some good out of it in certain context and formation. We have a few more cards to go for the ma major arcana, and oh boy, we got the star with tits again. Star doesn't have tits, but you know. Ah, that was a beautiful card. Of course, after the destruction of the tower, we have the star, which is the quiet after a storm. It's when the tragedies has passed, the destruction has passed, and things become quiet again, so you can start to pick up pieces again. It's a quiet a card, moment of healing. Basically, yes, it's a quiet moment of healing. It's a card of hope. It's not platinum, yes, it goes <laughs> <laughs> If that helps you. I was wondering, could you learn the tarot deck with the Jojo stands, but I can't really find any connections between the Jojo stands and the card meanings. Can't really find much. Maybe there is if I looked more into it, but oh well. But yeah, we have 
the peaceful moment after everything went to shit. Upside down, of course, it means that you're still running from something. You still have no time to rest. You have trouble healing from what happens. Or what's going to happen, basically. And next up, we have my card. Dun dun dun. It's the moon. Yeah, moon. Which I have a connection to, yes. Look, that dog is on there. Mimi, you're on my card. Because I woo. Oh, oh. The, moon, the moon is a bit... It can be a bit of a sad card. Again, it depends on the situation. It can mean things like... Sadness or like... What's the word again? I forgot. It's not sadness, but it's like similar to it. Melancholy? Yes, that was it. Melancholy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. Can also mean things of something hiding in the shadows. As you had earlier, the high priestess who was all about uncovering truth, the moon can hide certain things and cover them up with illusions. Like, imagine you are walking, it is night, or it's dark outside and you don't really see things. Maybe in an area you don't know that very well, things can get spooky, right? You're a bit yeah. uncomfortable, your mind is playing tricks on you. These kind of things. Can also be a very looking inwards in yourself, a bit depressing. Yeah. Fittingly for me! <laughs> <laughs> now that has such a great connection with it. It's a card of strong feelings though. There is a very similar card to it in the minor uh, arcanas. We will get to it. But yes. There are a lot of cards in the minor arcanas that mirror cards in the, ma in the major arcana. So feel free to also use similar, the same interpretation <coughs> on this, if you feel like it's right. Because we have, we had the star, we had the moon, now it's time for the sun! Look at them! Fussy! Honsing around! The sun is the natural opposite of the moon, as you have in all stories, in all mythologies, these are opposites. Also working together as yin and yang. Now since the moon is a melancholic card, it's about, you know, illusions and stuff. The sun is about happiness and celebrations. And also, it also has the... Uh, nuance of the truth in it, for example, like the high priestess. But its main focus is happiness and celebration, being able to share it. Now, of course, the thing is that when you turn these upside down, they can mean each other. That's how I usually interpret them. Like the moon mm. upside down is this is similar to the sun, while well, the sun upside down is similar to the moon. Of course, you should still keep in mind what the original card is if you encounter it. But that's how I usually do it. Maybe, for instance, while the sun is a lot louder, I feel like. It's, like I said, celebration, while the moon is more about being a bit isolated. You could say that Upside Down Moon is a happy card, but you're still kind of isolated. You're not celebrating as loudly. As the sun Upside Down could be like a very loud sadness. Like very upset. Very vocal. But again, that's more of a personal interpretation thing. Now, next of all, we are almost near the end. We have arrived at Judgment. Not to confuse his justice. But like I said, we are near the end, which is what Judgment is all about. It is the second last card in the Major Arcanas. It is the climax of said story. 
Like you can't think of it really as a story. And like this is the high point for all the climactic things that happen. All the very exciting things. Things that are being uncolored, things are taking actions, a lot of things are going on. This is like the final final encounter with something. So maybe this can also signify a end nearing. Like, think of it as like a grand precursor to the death pad. The judgment is where the last final straws are all being placed together. All the loose ends are being put together. And yeah, suppose the opposite of it could be that it can still be judgment, but it can be against your favor. It can also mean that the end is being drawn out. Yes, that was judgment. Last but very not, not least, it is the one. It is the only Zavarda! <laughs> also represented as a naked woman. Look at that! Zavarda! It's Dio! The world, Zavardo, is actually one of the only cards I can really see a connection to, to the Jojo stand. Because it's like the actual finale. This is more like the epilogue of the story, where, you know, the main characters, the heroes celebrate of the earlier victory. Things are falling neatly together. Everyone's happy, the happy end, yada, yada, yada. Things like this. Because the opposite side can either be a bad ending, or again, the ending is not near yet. You are still on your journey. It is being drawn out. Maybe not in the greatest way. But yes, that was a bad one. But that. It just took us over an hour <laughs> to get to all the, the major arcanas! Oh boy. And there suddenly is a second season. Exactly! It's like the world upside down is basically the announcement to a second season. It is like <clears throat> you are at the final episode of the season and at the very end after the credits they show a scene foreshadowing another enemy, foreshadowing another plot. That's basically the world upside down. But you have this neat little story of the fool embarking on an adventure, being a little silly, meeting people like the magician who helps them, kind of like the good fairy of like Cinderella or so, or other fairy tales. Which is actually kind of neat, while the other deck I've been using so far, this Fairy Tale one actually has the good fairy as the magician in it. In the... Then you get to the... Entire story. You hate that? <laughs> of course you do, I feel that though. I was binging a webtoon comic for like this entire week and I finally caught up to it. And the creator posts... Uh, the chapters on Patreon for people, but they ne but they didn't like set any announcement or so on Webtoon when the next episode will arrive. I'm gonna just be waiting. <laughs> Took me like an entire week. Now I have to wait. I think it started back in 2020 or 2022. I'm not sure. Oh wow. Well. Time to move on to the minor arcanas. Which I'm actually gonna split the cards again for a moment. Hold up. We're gonna put the major arcanas over here. Now that we've got through them. If anyone still has question about any arcanas I mentioned because I went over too quickly or my explanation didn't make sense, just let me know. I know I've been speed running through some of these. Yeah. I mean some of them are pretty straightforward. Yeah, some of them, like I said, are pretty on point, pretty easy to understand. 
but others are a bit difficult, and I know I'm not the greatest person at explaining things. Actually, let me put me. Let me put them in the middle. So now we have the four colors. As I mentioned at the very beginning, Tarot used to be a normal card game people used to play. A rather complicated one, but I guess people just kind of knew. Then again, I feel like every country or culture has, like, a specific card game they came up with. Like, if you try to explain the rules, you won't be able to. You just grow up learning it, and that's how you play it. And every household has different rules on it. Do you also have something like that, Shadzi? Um... Maybe not necessarily like that... But, uh, I know we do have, like, uh, I do have been, uh, I keep teaching this one game to, uh, like, all the Terrier caretakers that come by. It's oh, like that. It's like, it's like an older, uh, like, Dutch card game. But, like, uh, it's still being sold, it's just, like, not that popular. Uh, so it's not, like, using normal cards? No. Like the... Ah, okay. It's about, uh, it's really just, like, about, uh, making a journey, uh, by bike, and then you have to... You have to put down, like, uh, certain distances, and only, so, like, certain distances you can only bike when you have, uh, like, when the wind is favorable, that kind of shit. Oh, it sounds kind of cute, though. It is a really... It is a really fun card game. You can also really annoy people with it, but... Because <laughs> you can <laughs> also... You can I... do stuff like, you know, like, like, oops, you have a flat tire and I have to go fix it, or oops, there's a train in the way. Yeah, I get that. I... I am terrible to play cards against. I cuck people intentionally. <laughs> also, we have uh, we have a Dutch version uh, of Uno that is with regular playing cards. Um, and directly translated, it's called bullying. <laughs> yeah. Based. So that's why I'm like, I'm not... Not too surprised that like tarot cards were like regular playing cards at first, because it just reminds me of that. Yeah. You know, it actually reminds me of. <clears throat> Is this something I've only thought about recently? Um, when I. So fun fact, I actually used to go to a summer camp, <laughs> a Christian summer camp. Like, I only went there twice, but it was really fun. And the thing is that um, I live more towards the north of the country, but the summer camp was hosted by people who were at the very, very south of the country, like very close to Italy, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I met these people, we were chatting, we were playing cards, and we already had some issues, like I said, that... We, the, we had games that were similar, but like everyone had like different house rules. And they taught me another card game, which they called Verli, which if you if it if you take it as the dialect, it just means the world. <laughs> and so you had like basically these trump cards. There were four trump cards or three, I don't remember. I don't remember which they were, but I'm pretty sure they corresponded to tarot cards. So maybe this was derivative from Tarot at some point. I like to play it though, so... <laughs> you know, I forgot all the rules by now. At home we have a game called uh, Schnapsen, which you play with like regular cards. I don't know how to explain it. It's like... 
it's kind of like Uno, but you like have to beat the opponent's cards. Like mm -hmm. you have to place down. Oh yeah, let's say you place down a heart, for instance, like the color heart. Your opponents also have to play a heart card if they have one, and if they. So if everyone plays down a heart card, it's usually the one who has the highest heart card, for example. Mm. But then the rules also change, because there's like, oh yeah, some people play with like from ace to king, and other people, like my family, only played with the cards from nine to ace. So we had nine, ten, uh, the jack, the, the jack, or is it the knight? The knight, the queen, and the king, and ace. That was already pretty weird. And so it was like, oh yeah, nine was like zero points, and then ten was already pretty high. I don't know, it was weird. When you had something you called a dot, which is like the, the, the ultimate trump card. So if you like played a an acorn, for example, it would be... And heart is the adult card. It's like, if you do not have an acorn, you have to play a heart if you have one, and then you automatically get the card. I'm probably explaining it like shit. <laughs> if, 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 if I had cards and people to play, it would be easier. Yeah. Also, just remember, you don't even play it with, like, regular cards with, like, oh yeah, you have, like, spade and diamonds. It's like, we have completely unique cards for that. We have, like, bells. Acorns, hearts, and I think with leaves. I mean, they still mimic the colors. I just find it interesting. Maybe they also at some point derived from Harrod. I guess every coach had something similar. Anyways! <laughs> let's start with the colors. So let's start to uncover here. I separated all the colors we which we have for, as mentioned earlier, as the Magician has it, we have a cup, we have a pentacle, we have a sword, and we have a wand. But of course, Neasley fits into the four elements we mentioned earlier, which is very important for witchcraft. So now knowing these elements, what you also need to know is that elements have more meaning. They have more things to them. For instance, let's say water. Water is a very kind of cool card. Water is about emotions. It is about your feelings. It's about what your heart wants. It is very just purely your emotions, your inner self, your creativity. Then you have the pentacles. Pentacles is a lot more physical. Pentacles can be your body. It can also mostly mean how you're doing financially or wealthy or, you know, physical objects you own. It's a physical trait, a physical attribute. Then you have the sword, which is all about your brain. It's about your wisdom. It's about your knowledge. Actually, also quite creative. It's also your creativity. Things about your wits. And then you have the wand, which is fire. Which represents your passion, your desires, what you want to do. What are your goals? How do you like to do things? Things like that. So now that we have these colors sorted out, uh, every number also has its own meaning, and it's with the combination of the color and the number what the cards mean. For instance, we start with the ace, the first card. The aces represent the beginning of something. The so, like, very, very beginning. Like the fool, for example. So we have, for example, the ace of cups. This can be a beginning of new feelings. Maybe you meet someone who makes you feel special. Maybe you find something that makes you feel good. It's a beginning of something new. Then we have the pentacles. This is the beginning of maybe something financially good. Maybe your body. 
Maybe you've had a surgery, an injury, and you wanted to heal better. You can put this. Like I said, you can also use cloud cards in witchcraft. A lot of rituals and such, I see spells, uh, also say things like put a ace of pentacle somewhere around your altar if you perform any sort of money spells, if you need money. Things like that. Then the Ace of Swords could be a new idea sparking. Maybe you have to solve something, something got in the way, you need to figure out a way to get rid of it. This is how you get your ideas. And the Ace of Wands, last but not least, that is the spark of a new passion. Maybe you, like I said, have found some a new interest that's like really passionate within you. Maybe you found a new art style that gets you to draw again. Maybe you found a show you really enjoy and you want to get match of it. Things like that. Maybe it's also like in your career. Maybe you it's, this can be a start of an opportunity for your dream job. So we have the beginnings. Now we have two. Number two. I'll uncover it. Because this is where things can be dramatically different depending on what color you choose. Let's start with the cups again. Well, the two, that's this is first. The two resemble. They can resemble a sort of balance. But they can also resemble two opposites. And again, with the upside down meanings of all of this, I forgot to mention it at the ace. It can also like vary a lot. But like, as the aces are for new beginnings, upside down meaning can be something that prevents a new beginning. Like something is getting in the way. Or you just simply can't come up with stuff. But yes, the two. The two can mean balance, they can also mean that two that you have two options. You have a decisions to make, or you get together with something. Let's go with the cups. You can compare the two of cups to the lovers card actually. I'm gonna mention it a few times if I remember which minor arcanas are similar to major arcana. So these also represent a connection with someone, a bond, an emotional feeling you have with someone or something. It's usually a pretty good sign. Of course, opposite is gonna be something bad. Maybe it's connection crumbling. Then we have the Two of Pentacles. Having financial stability, for example, or being in perfect health. Having a work-life balance. You're balancing all these things, all these physical attributes you need to take care of. Maybe it's also your household. Maybe you're getting your chores done. And also get some time for yourself. Now we get to the more difficult ones. Usually the swords and ones I'm very wary about because they never seem to be that great. So we have two of swords. This represents a decision. Maybe two split ideas that you have to be certain of. Maybe two conflicting ideas you have. And you have to make a decision quickly. Last but not least, we have the Two of Wands, which is, again, a decision you have made or something you have to balance. Maybe you have two passions. Like, you have a passion in your career, but you also have a passion, like a hobby or something. And you, you, and you need to figure out what you want to do with this. Like, where to put your time in here. Maybe there are multiple things you want, and you have to figure out which you want to pursue more. Easy decisions. Now we get to the threes. 
Dang, this one goes by faster. I'm <laughs> just imagining things. Yeah, I mean, it's more like you have like their overarching thing and then their individual, like, secondary meaning, so that's a lot easier than having one card that has one big meaning. Yeah. So the three, the three represents movement. It is starting to change as we have two as a balance or as a decision. This is like after the decision. This is after things have balanced out a bit. This is about, like I said, things changing. We have, for instance, the three of cups. The movement and feeling. The feelings are changing. Maybe you started off with a good feeling, but it's turning sour. Maybe it's the opposite. Or maybe you're still celebrating something. Maybe you're still celebrating your newfound relationship. You're enjoying yourself. It can be quite a kind of celebration. <laughs> and I realize I need to drink more, holy fuck. <laughs> It's playing as a stream, I won't be used to talking much, but no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same. Ah. <laughs> I have this weird scratching feeling in my throat and for some reason I can't take it off. Oh no. <coughs> that is not good. Then I just continue to stream in sign language. <laughs> I mean, I have my hand cam, so... Anyways, the three of pentacles. The three... The pentacles, as I mentioned, is physical stuff. So this could be a change in your financial wealth. Maybe it's going up, maybe it's going down. Who knows? It can also be your physical health. Maybe you notice your body's changing. Maybe you notice you're not as strong as you used to be, as healthy as you used to be. That's like a sign you should watch out for your stuff. This is where things might go dire. It can also mean that you are getting new wealth more. Now we have the Three of Swords. The Swords are pretty depressing, not gonna lie. The Three of Swords represents a heartache, a betrayal. Your mind is changing about something or someone. A plan is changing, not in your favor. You have to make a way to make your original plan work. And now the Three of Wands. Maybe your special interests are evolving, maybe they're changing to something else. And maybe you're not ready to move on from the passion you had earlier. <laughs> Don't know. Try not to. I can get through the stream. <laughs> maybe I'll make myself some E afterwards. Maybe it's good, yeah. some E. Ah, maybe I'll ask Mimi to make me some E. I think he just find out for a smoke break. Mm. Oh my god. We're getting to the fours! Now the weird way I remember the meaning of the fours is a table. Like a table ta typically table has, yes, a, a table typically has four legs, and you usually want a table to be, uh, pretty not balanced. What is it? Stable. Yeah. Basically, you want the you want it to not shake around. You want it to keep all your things in place without tilting, pretty straight, and that is what the four is about. It is. About things being absolutely stable. So we have, for instance, stable fields. Well, in this case, it doesn't necessarily mean, oh yeah, you have your 
feelings un under check, like anxiety and such. It can also mean that you're stubborn about something. The the blockade of not changing your feelings. Maybe that's a situation you're not happy about, and you just you, you just can't change your feeling. You can't feel good about it, no matter how you put it. It can be a good thing. It also can be a bad thing. Of course, we have stability on the pentacles. There's of course financial stability. Or your body being pretty stable. Like not changing much. Maybe for the better, maybe for the worse. But usually most of people just... Easiest way to remember is financial stability. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Now the four of swords. We're still in the negative. This is... You are absolutely stubborn. You have this idea you want to go through with it. Even though your cards are not in your favor, you're walking right into a trap, basically. You're dooming yourself. Because you're too stubborn to change your ways. That's pretty grim. A lot of the Swords cards are pretty grim. I think there's like one good card in it. Mm. Besides the Court cards. But the Court cards are also a whole nother league in and of itself. Now we have the Four of Wands. Not really too much to add to it. Again, your passions are pretty stable. This could mean that you don't get new passions, but you're not actually losing your passion for things. Maybe this can also get a bit boring after a while. So this might also be where shortly before you're getting burned out. But you're still content with your situation. Now, we are getting to the bad territory. The fives. All fives are terrible. Bad. And that is basically what the five is. Is it, is it, it is conflict. It is something bad happening. It is how the plot progresses. So we have... The Five of Cups, which is very similar to the Moon, as I mentioned earlier. It is just absolute depression. Your feelings are in the gutter. You're just sad. Everything's going bad and you just feel like shit on it. It is just not a good card to have. It is... It is even worse than the Moon card. Like, the Moon card can have some good implications. This is just... No. <laughs> Sadness incarnate. Depression incarnate. The just roll back over in bed card. <laughs> yeah. If you're just like, hey, how's the day going? And you like pull this out, it's like, okay, I, I'm staying in bed today. <laughs> yeah. Bad running day it is. <laughs> ah. Now we have the five Pentacles. This is said downfall of your previous financial stability. Maybe you're losing all of your money. Maybe someone stole all of your money. Again, it can also be a physical health. Maybe it was you were fine yesterday, but today you feel awful. You feel like shit. Maybe, maybe you got corona. Maybe it's a cold. Maybe you broke your leg. Who knows? It is downhill. Then you have the Five of Swords. You, you can't think of anything well anymore. You notice that your plan really didn't work out as you thought earlier. So you are stealing from the people around you. You're stealing from your enemies. You're stealing from your friends. You're just lying and deceiving people. You're using your brain for evil. It is basically the Five of Swords. Last but not least, the conflict between your passions. We are back again where you had your passion, you were content with them, but now you realize that another passion has come along that clashes with another. 
maybe an ideal of yours. Maybe it's something career-wise. Like, you were on your path from getting your dream job, but you just realized that you have passion for something completely else. Now you're conflicted on which way to go. Should you still stay on your path to what you just worked on, or do you want to pursue your new path? But yes. Now we get to the six. Year six. Now, in a way, the six is similar to the star. We had we had the downfall with all the five cards. We now have the things going better for us. We hit rock bottom. We are climbing up again. Oh, hey, Slip, how you doing? How's it going? Hello. So let's get to it. We have. The Six of Cups, one of my favorite cards actually. It reminds me of the Lazaga a lot. <laughs> e. You know why? Um, not sure. It's a card about friendship. Yeah, it's like I, I had a hunch it would be people. that, but like, not entirely sure. Yeah, I remember it mostly because of the fairy tale deck I have. But yes, it's about opening up again and making new connections. Maybe returning to old friends. Catching up. Things like that. It reminds me of the Lazada. Because they may be seeds. <laughs> then you have the Six of Pentacles. This is a card about generosity. Giving to the people who have less than you. It doesn't have to necessarily be like money and things. I mean, obviously this can mean like donating stuff, but it can also like aiding help in other ways you can. Maybe you can help out somewhere. Assist someone. Like you are, you are getting better, you can help other people to also get better. New deck? It is new deck! Because I'm going oh. through cards. I'm rambling about cards. I have gotten through all the major arcanas. I'm going through the minor arcanas right now. Then I'm gonna do some... Some spreads. We're moving quickly through the minors, though. So now we are reaching to the Six of Swords. We are done stealing, we are done thievering and deceiving. We are going away to try for a new start. We're trying to find a new safe space. We're trying to find a way to get our own new ideas back again. Now the Six of Wands. This usually represents a sort of victory. Like one of the many cards that represent victory. This is for me also a bit difficult sometimes to read. In a way I see it close to the sun. A louder celebration. About your passion, about your interest. Something good is happening. You're passionate about it. You want to celebrate it. The W card, basically. Of course, after six, we have seven! Seven. 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 I think I might have mixed up the Five of Swords with the Seven of Swords. Oh. The art of it, I'm used to the fairy tale deck, which slightly mimics the original art. But the composition is still a bit different. 
So I got confused because I was mostly remembering the image of the card and not the number of the card. But like I said, fi five still represents more like conflict, so a conflict of wits. Maybe you are. Maybe you're fighting with someone. You have an idea. Someone else has an idea. You're not happy about it because you know your idea is here. Basically. And the seventh one was the one with the thievery. Like, trying to take stuff from others. Uh, I could quickly check what my thing says about them. Yeah, you do that. The sevens. Um, seven was that about? I think seven was actually also about how many? Eight was the rebirth. I remember that. What was seven? Seven was I think also about not really looking back at things, but like taking a break. Hi. Okay, give me a moment, I'm just gonna consult my booklet for a second. Seven's a bit difficult. Okay, so I was on the right track. So it is about the trying to get something new, the yearning for something new. You want to start something again. It is not like the ace, where you are at the very, very beginning. It is why you want to pick up something again. So we have, for example, the cups. Seven of cups. This is a daydreaming kind of card. That's usually what I associate it with, with idealism. Because you kind of look reflecting on what you want and such. And that leaves you emotionally just wandering up, imagining all the things you want, you could have, and like, not paying attention much to reality. You're just thinking about the best case scenario, the idealism. Idealism is also a strong thing within the cups, but we'll come to it later. This is going to be important for the court cast. Now we have... The Seven of Pentacles. This is basically, you have put in a lot of hard work into something. It is finally, it's finally time to reap what you have sown. To get your rewards and take a rest, take a breather. Because you've earned it. You've worked hard. Then again, the Seven of Swords was the thievery thing, the deception. Being de uh, decepting someone or something. Maybe yourself, even. A lot of these cards can mean, of course, affecting other people or affecting you. It entirely depends on the reading. And now to the Seven of Wands. Maybe you're trying to squeeze in more passion. I think I always think about adding ones as adding passion, but uh -huh. you are working on it still. You're returning to your roots, the original passion that drove you to where you are now. The one that the ace of ones has called upon you. But you have decided what passion to tell you. Now we get to eight. I remember eight. Eight, in a way, is rebirth. It can also be pretty complicated. Seven swords like B from Naruto. Now you're just saying words. I've never watched Naruto. Is this what people feel like when you talk about Jojo when they haven't watched Jojo themselves? <laughs> Like, you just say random words. Yeah. <laughs> Understandable. Ah. Let's go the eight. 
It's Alribe. They are a bit similar to Salmon, but let me go through the cards to explain a bit. The Eight of Cups. Does it remind you of something? It's like the Hermit. Hmm. Yes. You have the guy, the Hermit, walking out to be alone, to wander, to wander and to think. Wandering among themselves, contemplating. This is, again, a card that wants to isolate you, to reflect on yourself, to go on a journey deep within yourself, to understand these feelings you have, and everything this has happened for now. Then you have the Eight of Pentacles. That is you picking up your craft again. This is not necessarily a card that focuses too much on money, on your financial stuff, but also more on the physical aspects of your skills, your craftsmanship. Like this is the word I usually connect with this card, is the word craftsmanship. Mm. You're picking up something and you're creating something, you're working on something. Something that might benefit you, maybe financially, maybe just brings you into a good mood. It is just a longing of wanting to create something. Typically more physical. It can be something practical, it can just be something pretty. Now the Eight of Swords. Again, I can usually only really say bad things about swords. The word that usually sucks in my head on this one is victim. Like you are a victim of your own mind. Being held captive, being blamed by maybe yourself, maybe other people around you. Being in a helpless situation. And now the Eight of Wands. This is. This is the apex of your passion, the climax, right? Like judgment, basically. So this is similar to the major arcana of judgment. Final, final step in your passion. Soon you are there. This is the, this is the real grinding card. We have eight, so we now have nine. Nine. So, let me go with the Try to remember the nines. I did say that. Okay, this is what that is. Well, it did say this was like the the. What did I say? The climax of the cards. This is more the end of the story. Like I said, I, I didn't really explain it good, but you can definitely see with the colors that there's a story progressing. At least I do. Or maybe, maybe I'm just imagining stuff. Maybe my schizophrenia is, ca is catching up with me. <laughs> Anyways, the Nine of Cups. This is, again, another card of celebration. Maybe finding a last one. Finding a feeling you haven't felt in ages. But that's why you had in the Eight of Cups, you were searching for something, maybe within yourself. And this is what you found. This is your conclusion. 
the happy ending. Now you have the Nine of Pentacles. You've worked hard for your body, for your money, for everything you possess. You can now rest at peace. You have earned a lot that you needed to. Now you take rest. Now you take care of yourself. Physically. The grind is over. Now the Nine of Swords. Again, we are not ending with a happy ending. Not at all. What was the Nine of Swords again? I'm scared of the swords. This is regret. This is just regret incarnate. As far as I know. Let me, let me check the cards out quickly. I'm trying to think if I can remember the Nine of Swords. I usually just remember the images of my old deck. And that usually gets me somewhere. Ah, yes. I should have taken it from the image. But yeah, a lot of times you can tell from the image on the card if it's like a good card, a bad card. I mean, look at this guy. He's miserable. He's having nightmares. He is scared. He is regretting his actions. And he's not having a good time. He got the bad ending. For all of the stealing he did. And now we have this. A bittersweet one. Because the one story was quite beautiful with and of itself. The constant fighting for what you love. What you're passionate about. But now you're tired. Now you just want to rest. You want to find a place where you can just... Take your mind of things and rest. This is a card of trying to find sanctuary, to find healing. Now this was the nines. And the seven was the ending. But there are the tens. Which is like, less like the ending and more like an epilogue. Just like the world. Now the tens are everything. Look, it's another Mimi card. It has doggos on it. Now, of course, the ending isn't well for everyone. As you already saw in the sword story. Let's start with the cups. The ending of the cups. You can see it's like a family. A happily ever after. The hero has found this true love. Together, they make a happy life together. The celebration, things, spinning neatly together, the things, the celebration, maybe a wedding, maybe something similar to it. Now the Ten of Pentacles. This is like you have grinded your entire life, now you're old, yeah, you, you get, you, you are a rich grandpa, grandma. Whoever you are. You like to spoil the children, maybe. You like to see them grow. Following in your footsteps. This is why the grind is stopped and you don't ever have to worry about, you know, money and working and such. I like that in August. The 11 out of 10. Mimi really likes this card because on my fairy tale deck it also has like a doggo doggo grandpa on it and Mimi is like hey that's me <laughs> so now we have the ten of swords absolutely murdered dead abdicted pretty self-explanatory this is the end of yourself the end of your wits you've been plagued by nightmares and now you're trying to end the suffering. Absolutely brutal. At least the court cards for the swords aren't too bad. Now we have the Ten of Wands. This is the bittersweet epilogue I meant earlier. 
You've given it your all. You have tried your best. You've, you've been burned out. Tried to rest. But ultimately your passion goes to an end. But you have none for it anymore. Maybe you have reached this dream job of yours. Maybe you've been work working in it too long and suddenly this thing you enjoy is no longer enjoyable. It has become work. You don't like it anymore. Your passion has just run out for it. All oh, well, these were the numbers. Now, now we get to the court cards. We get to the pages. Or the jacks, or whatever you want to call it. Suppose we have one for each color. Now, the court cards work a bit differently than these numbers. Like I said, with the numbers you can imagine a bit of a story. And where you are at in the story and what it's about. The court cards, on the other hand, is easier to remember as actual people. Like how I take the Empress and the Emperor as a mother and father figure. That usually helps me to identify their meanings. And so you do the same for the code. Now we have the pages. You can think of them as being very young kids. Very inexperienced in their respected field, which will be, of course, the feelings for cups, materialism for pentacles, wisdom for swords, and passion for wands. They are, in a way, the incarnation, personification of the aces. They're not an entirely new start, but they are new to it. They're striving to become the best they can. Like the Page of Cups, for example. Full of feelings. Full of idealisms as well, and dreams and hopes. It is a very idealistic boy. Who hasn't been scarred by reality yet. They are also like the, the fools of their respective fields, if that even helps better. And you have the pentacles. He is describable as like a new intern. Like you are at work, you got a new guy on the job. He's fresh out of school, out of college, whatever. And he's just starting to work and he's really enthusiastic about it. He is not the greatest yet in his craft, but he's working really hard for it. And again, he is optimistic for the future and for all the money it will bring him. Now we have the Page of Swords. He strives for wisdom. He strives to learn something new. He's not wise yet, he just wants to learn. That is what he wants to do. He is trying to find ways, different ways of learning something, finding people, finding books, finding resources, all of that stuff. Still a little dumb yet though, but he's getting there. Maybe you can think of it as a student. He's here to learn. He doesn't know anything yet. Now the page of wands. Again, the sparks of a passion. Mm. He's definitely searching for an adventure, something to be passionate about. He, he wants to do something, he wants to find something. Something new, something he hasn't seen before, something that is catching his eye. Like the search of a new hobby. Those were the pages. And now we have the knights. Of their respected fields. Now the knights are easiest to remember as an upgraded version of the pages. Just how the pages are just starting out in their respective fields. These people have already been in there for years. 
Like I said, you have the new intern. You're already like a senior at this workplace. You know how everything goes. How all the wheel turns. And you're pretty good at your job. Let's see the Knight of Cups. He knows that the world isn't as kind as he wants it to idealistic be, which is why he tries his best to make it as idealistic as he wants to be. A knight in shining armor indeed. Fighting for his own feelings. Not battling down even when things go south. Now we have the Knight of Pentacles, as I said, on the workforce. He's already been there, done that, nothing new. He clocks in, he clocks out at the same time. He might be a bit boring. He might be very much into a routine, but he's getting things done. He's getting th things done good and quickly. And he's also very reliable. Now we have the Knights of Swords. He's someone who already knows a lot of stuff, but maybe still striving to learn for more. Now he wants to use the stuff he has learned and fight for what he believes is right. For his own dreams. Similar to the cups, but more driven with his brain rather than his heart. He's listening more to his head, his thoughts, his logical conclusions than what his heart is telling him. It's like the great difference between the swords and the cups. The swords are about logic, the cups are about heart. Now the Knight of Wands. <coughs> bless you, Mimi. Yes. Yes, Shetty also says bless you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have the Knight of Wands, just as the others. He is fighting for his passion. He has found something to cling on to, and he will cling on to it very tightly. I don't really have much to say about ones. We are getting there. We're getting through all the cards. Now we are at the Yas Queens. Nay! <laughs> <laughs> all the queens. All these beautiful ladies. So it's easy to think of the Queen and King as the parents to the pages. So we are back to the Empress and the Emperor. Only that they have their own specific feels. Now a lot of interpretation I see for the Queen is the word guidance. Like the Queen of Cups. Maybe you are at a loss or something, you're confused about your feelings, conflicted. She's giving you guidance on sorting it out. She's giving you maybe even ideas, things to do. Guiding you through your turmoil. Maybe you're really sad. She's like helping you through it. Now we have the Queen of Pentacles. She's the kind of mother who teaches you how to do taxes because school doesn't teach you. She guides you on teaching you the value of your body, of money, of belongings. She can grant you... She's basically giving you pocket money. Giving you your allowance. Now we have the Queen of Swords. She can be a bit cunning, maybe a bit manipulative if she wants to be, but she is very wise. She's maybe most like a teacher. In a way that she wants to bestow her wisdom onto you. Give you guidance on ideas maybe that you can think of. Maybe she's not telling it to you directly, she's just nudging you into the right direction. Now the Queen of Wands! I never noticed it has a little black cat down here! Look! Hello. There's a little cat on the bottom! Little kitty cats! Queen of Wands! Again, giving you guidance on what to do with your passion. 
the things you want to do. Maybe you're still not sure. Maybe you still haven't found out what you want to do. She's trying to guide you into the right direction. There's the most thing. There's the word guide. Now we come to the kings. The very last calves. And we finally got through all of them. It just took us three hours. <laughs> <laughs> but we finally got here. So the queen is the empress, which of course means the king is the emperor. Like I said, he's more of a father figure. He's not... He's maybe not the person who is as close to you as the queen trying to give you guidance. But what he knows best is control. Leadership, to be precise. How to handle, how to have a real grip on things. That's why things can sometimes be a bit complicated. Say the King of Cups. The ultimate ruler of your emotions. So if you ever feel like you don't have your, con your feelings under control, maybe it's anxiety, maybe it's depression, maybe whatever it is that you feel like you just can't deal with it right now. You you go for the king. You search for the king for guidance. Because he knows how to keep them under control. How to keep all these feelings under check. Now we have the king of pentacles. Again, he has a full grip on your financial stuff. And your health. So if you want to get a better grip on how your body works, you, you have the king. Also your financial stability. He's good with money. And he can also bestow you more. Give you good luck on how to manage it. King of Swords. He is even more cunning than the queen. He knows everything. He is protecting that wisdom of his. But he knows how to use it well. He knows how to use it for good or for evil. He can help you figure out that. And very, very last, we finally have... The King of Wands. The absolute pinnacle of your passion. The one that controls it all. Hmm. Never have much to say about the Wands. Maybe I'm just not a passionate person. I, feel more I don't know why my brain went to... I don't know why my brain went to said one hyperfixation. <laughs> Basically. I think of all the ones as hyperfixation. I feel like I'm usually more drawn to cups than other colors in the deck. I don't know how to explain it. But yes, he is he's your major hyperfixation. And with that we've gotten through all the cards. It is like the King of Wands, he takes my passion away every now and then, lost like a bastard. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Anyways. Which means we can now take these cards and shuffle them! Let's go! Please. Oh, Finally time. Finally. There isn't really a right or wrong way how to mix cards. I'm gonna have to shuffle them for a very long time. I'm also not used to them. These are texture-wise very different from my old cards. The shuffling and will take a long ass time. And you also have to consider you want to have cast it upside down. Yeah, so, so usually, usually like I take half, I flip that upside down and I mix them in and then I take another half and take those upside down. Yeah, I used to do that too, but I'm now doing like three spins. Shuffle down draw five, there's a chance that all five pieces of the forbidden exodia. <laughs> God, what will be the cards of forbidden exodia of Arras. 
Another way I know people can do it is by just spreading them out like this. Yeah, just spread them like along the table. Them. We need to have the room for that. I have a little bit of room. I'm just gonna... I really don't. Well, I'm gonna put the candle away a bit. I have more space. I'm trying to think more about divination while we're doing this. There goes the LEDs. Oh my fuck, it could be that sound LEDs won't work right now because I had to change my Twitch password again. Hold up. Let me log into <coughs> sound LEDs. Down there, real played him for y'all. So how you doing, Cynical? How's it going? Hi hi. Hello. What have you played? To be continued. That has to be continued. La Paris, is that it? My alerts, is that it? What has to be continued this one? There you go. Give you the points, Baggy. Thank you, Mimi, for returning points. Hopefully, this should work now. Maybe I need to put the source in again. I don't know. Why is your back pain? Stop. Get some. Okay. Let's see. Now I have to think about all I have to draw. No, Sam asked for his day. I'm a bit late to it, but I'll do it anyways, because it's in the queue. And Shulk also. Why is Shulk asking for other people's readings and not himself? Probably for the meme. Probably. I'm just gonna pull some cards and spread them around. Especially the ones that tend to stick together. Just to make sure. You can, of course, if you... Oh, hello. If you have the space for it, you can, of course, always, like, shuffle the cards like this and just be like, okay, I feel like uh, this card is the one I need to. That's also where you can do it, but it requires a lot of space, so it can be very impractical. If you have the space, it's fun to do it. Something fun about picking your own cards and like a mess of cards. I mean, it's kind of like similar to how I you know, like fan them out in my hand and then pick one. Like I just let my hand be like this. Can you do that with your hand decorations? No, I cannot get the grip <laughs> on the card to pull it out. Oh um, yeah. Oh well. Time to get all these cards somehow back together, <coughs> and I shuffle them a few more times. And then hopefully we should have a mixture of cards. So, mix well. And then if you just keep using your cards, they naturally mix pretty well. Yeah. can be good even if you, after a while, you just use the shuffle method to, like, every now and then uh, go for the this kind of messy kind of shuffling. I feel like this really, in a way, not recharges your deck, but more, like, cleanses it, uh, if it makes sense. You have to also of, cleanse uh... your decks. At the start of, uh, like, uh, a new session, like a new daily session, uh, I like to grab the bottom half, flip it, and put it at the top, and then shuffle it. Oh yeah, that works very well, too. Cleanse the deck, nobody to cut this why do you always point out my hands? This is literally, like, the fourth time I've shown them. <laughs> why are people so weird about it? 
That's the uh -huh. deck do I need to grab the dish soap? Please don't put dish soap on my new cards. But yeah, you have to cleanse your cards every now and then. Usually by doing something like this. I mean, there are multiple ways to cleanse your tools. The deck just counts as any other tool you use for witchcraft. I'm pretty sure some of your books uh, touch upon cleansing tools, right? Uh, probably there is some. Um, I just only have one book right now. Uh, let's see. Oh, no, 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 it's easy to find. Because I don't know you're silly like that, too. Yeah, these are the Jojo cards. You want to get Jojo done? I explained all the Jojo cards already, you just missed them. You sure pay up the <laughs> That's a posture check, idiot! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you let me focus. First of all, it is Sam. That's all your channel points. Sucks to be you then. <laughs> Looks like you need to watch my streams more. Yeah. Not me sitting on 88.8k. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Mimi has like over 200k. I'm scared. I think I used, uh, back when, like, you had, like, the monster redeem, like, set really high, I used two of those, so I, like, took it down by half. Wait, wait, what redeem did I have? The monster? Yeah, I turned monster colors. Yeah, yeah, I thought I always had them at 666. Did I change that? No, you used to have it at, like, 20k or something. Really? I don't remember. Yeah, you did. You probably be it. Like, uh, on the debut, you had it really high, and then I, I did it twice, once to show it off, and then once to set it back to normal. <laughs> so be it. I still need to set it up. I only have two color changes set up on the model. I haven't gotten to the monster yet. Mm hmm. I should probably get to it. I think this is enough shuffling for now. Cards should be mixed well. So Sam's day! He's not here anymore, but here we go. We have... He's not here anymore, so it's like he died. I mean, according to your cards, you might have. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> okay, we have his vibe of the day. We have what to look forward to. And what to avoid. So Will many so major arcana you pull. Let's see, number one! Oh boy, it's the three of swords! Oh no! Oh, that's not good. He's gonna get betrayed today! Oh no! Betrayal! Betrayal! The feeling of betrayal. The feeling of being called out, his weakness being exploited. Now we have... Oh look, we have the Emperor! <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you have the Empress? I had the Empress. To? <laughs> I guess you pulled the mother, I pulled the father. Yeah, Sam's <laughs> gotta run to, to his parents. Oh no. He's gonna need his parents today. Or parental figures. Maybe he's just at work and he's like, I feel like I need an adult for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it's trying to say. No last. We have the moon! <laughs> oh no. Wait, what did you have? Um, you had the star, right? Star upside down. 
Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not looking any better. I just have the actual depression this time. Oh, uh, you got two, bitch. <laughs> Rick out, I pulled three. I mean, it doesn't help that the first card I pulled was the three of swords. Yeah, that doesn't help As either. I mentioned earlier, the swords are not really that great to pull. Oh boy, he's surely gonna have a day. Yeah. Well, let's go Shulk! Last request of the day, unless someone else wants him. Because otherwise I will show off more spreads. Uh, you can do one for me if you want. You can do a bigger one for me. Yeah. I'm willing to beat your experiment. <laughs> you know this. You we, we, we know how it went the last time I did the Celtic cross. Shall we try again? Shall sure. we try the Celtic cross again? Sure, let's see how my, my, my crisis has evolved. I am confused about the Celtic cross. Like, whenever I try to look up the spread, like, its meaning, it's like the left half, the actual cross part is always the same. This is always on point. It's the four cards on the side that are different. That, that's different. Mm. But like, whenever I try to look it up. Like, the booklet I have explains it differently than, like, a website did that I looked up. Let me try to actually base it off one of the books I have. What does to see which one has say? Because it has the same one at the bottom here. Like, some stuff you can do... Um... Oh, it's Mimi's day tomorrow. Mimi's going on a date with me tomorrow. Aww. It's, it's a single card. Let's see, what will we get? How's Mimi's day? Uh, I would like to tell you, but uh, Hida just had this uh, document has just decided to uh, half cut off. Oh no! The the, the spread. So uh... be... it's the Knight of Pentacles. Mimi is gonna buy me stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we already knew that, though, Mimi. You did mention that one store you wanted to go into. <laughs> I'm not saying what store, I'm just saying the card is pretty accurate in what we planned. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Well, hey, we need to go shopping. Because Mimi, Mimi got me Mimi got me a hundred euro voucher for a clothing store I really like. Mm. So I wanna go there. I'm still trying to find a, a store that has like more like alternate fashion styles, but I haven't found any. It was like, oh, let's just go to the big city. It'll surely have something there, but no. The store I really like is actually... It's going like a bit for a cottagecore vibe, but not exactly. And like I the one I went to, like it. it was like a little bit more alternative, but at least it had like... uh. It had like stuff that I couldn't find in other stuff. It also uh, had like s like some items, but it's still it was it isn't like entirely what like I feel like my style is pulling towards. So that's that. Like, cool like, I, I got like some these. items there, but it was just like it's not entirely it. I feel like sadly with certain. Styles, the only viable option is just online shopping, which is annoying because you can't try on shit. Yeah, that's like what I'm trying to avoid. Like, I'm I'm trying to find a store somewhere that just like, it, it, it's, surely there has to be something. Cause I wanna I wanna Sadly, go to more help. like a darker yeah. style or like you know a little bit more like goth or something, but. Or, just haven't found anything. I guess maybe it helps if you specifically look up brands, like of brands that you can find. Maybe, but it's like, just more like I I don't know what to call what I'm going for until I like 
find that exact thing and then learn the name of it? Yeah, that just means you have to browse a while and figure out the right name for it. Like, I know with Goth, there's a lot of subcategories. Yeah, that's why I'm like, I don't know exactly what I'm looking for, which makes it a lot more difficult to, like, find where... Like, are you more into, like, the vampire-themed stuff, Goth? I feel like that's something that suits you. Yeah, I'm also just, like, I am looking for ways to, like, connect to, like, femininity again in, like, a, a darker way. Oh. So it's so like, like you are still you sorry. Like part of me is it feels like it might go more towards like I don't know, like gothic Lolita or something, but on the other hand there's also like like more like Western styles maybe. I just I don't know what I would call it and that's like the thing that is difficult. That's about like it. something it's like something dramatic is what you like. Yeah, dramatic, maybe a little bit like frilly, you know. It's yeah. like like the basic like I guess shape of it would be girly, but like the way that it's like uh like patterned and uh, like you know, with like the colors and like the details it would be more dark styled. Yeah. Like, maybe with more skull patterns or something like that? Mm, yeah, not necessarily, not necessarily like, skull, patterns but like dark on elements. it, but like, like, maybe like a little, like, uh, like, skull, like, uh, hanger, or like a bit of a, something on a belt or something, something like that. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. I'm sure we can find something. Yeah, it's just like, I need to, like, really look around for something that fits the bill and I just like I, I went to the, the, the city where I was like surely there has to be one store out of so many of these that has something that is like remotely close and no not really mm, I don't know maybe, if I'm like, uh, like just oh let go thank you for the 11 maybe months maybe a close prime. in a different city <laughs> maybe a different city maybe I just like I need to go more off the beaten path like, maybe Ooh. they've, like, hidden all of, like, the the alternative shops, like, somewhere, like, in a back alley or something. Mm. That, that sounds like you a thing. To, you want to consult the cards on their own to figure out how to find it? Mm. I mean, it won't, like, tell you, oh yeah, look there, but, you know, like, a bit of guidance. Maybe, that could be interesting. Want cards or you want runes? I haven't used runes a lot. Let's do runes then, see what they say. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna put these cards aside for now. You know what? Before I do that, I really need to piss. And also <laughs> probably make myself something to drink. Yeah. Thank you, child! I was about to say! <laughs> was a hello, child! How you doing? Mama is also getting some hydration, also don't mind my you now empty monster can Lamo. <laughs> I still have more. Oh hydrato from the crib. I already did. But yeah, I'll be I'll be right back. I need to piss. I need to drink. I need to piss and make piss. Oh, welcome. Yeah, welcome I'll be welcome. right back. Bye. Bye bye. There she goes. Please speak English in the chat, though. Is uh, we can't moderate other languages. I <laughs> have people up though this function. Again, please speak English, or I'm gonna have to kick you out of the chat. You just woke up? Yeah, I figured. You were out for a while.
Well, you don't speak English, uh, but you can understand me in, uh, in some level. I'm sorry, but again, I can't really moderate other languages. I don't really have moderators that I can do that for me. So, if you still want to watch the stream, then just watch it, don't chat. That works. <laughs> Thank you. Slept way too long? Yeah, I noticed. Oh my god, your boss is really just ghosting you. Well, I guess I... I guess that means you're not doing the job. You ain't responding, you ain't doing the job. Set this to multiply, and I wanna. Guess you'll just eat hail then. Well, Huh? Lego is eating you, apparently. Um, nom nom tasty fish, apparently. Has he never threatened to eat you before? He does it with everyone, basically. No, huh? <laughs> He does it with everyone, basically. 
Bit hill turns into a cow when confused. Does hell don't know my lore? No, I mean, have you ever really shared your lore? Those six holes have been happened. You deserve cheesy balls if you hate cheese. Damn. Cause I got my favorite mug. Oh. I can't show it off. It's my Sailor Moon mug. I made myself a ponyo drink. Oh. Ponyo. It reminds me a bit of the drink. My papa once made when I was really sick. Mm -hmm. One of the only few bonding moments I really remember. I felt like so shit. I don't know what I had. My dad gave me like a mug of milk, like one milk with was it? It wasn't. It, it was with sugar, and whiskey, I believe. Was it whiskey? No. No, it was rum. Yes, milk with sugar and rum. That was what he gave me. It reminds me of it, even though it it tastes better than that. Last time. Okay, we said we were going to question the rooms. Yes. So, so why does my OBS keep flickering? I'm kind of scared. I don't know why it does that. I've just noticed it's doing it. Imagine eating hail expecting to taste salmon and all you taste is hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go get oh, it didn't even compare me to steak, the heck? <laughs> it's just ham one. Uh, apparently you, uh, hell, you, you don't get enough quality to be a steak. Curse to be a hamburger. <laughs> my runes. My little bag of runes. Have I shown off my runes yet? I think I did one. You have to me. Maybe not the stream. I feel like, I don't know if I had them when I did the New Year's divination stream. But a lot of people just barely me had back. them. Because I think you showed of, I think you showed them off and also, um, Mimi's? Oh yeah, Mimi's. I don't know where Mimi's are. Maybe they're upstairs, maybe they're here. Yeah, I was about but to yeah, say, isn't actually, isn't actually being compared to a hamburger instead of a steak, like a, like, like a... An American compliment. What's a look, Shetsy? It's you! Mine! It it's you! It's the death rune! Yay! Yay! Like, supposed to be a sickle. <laughs> a lot of these runes actually mimic tarot cards, which is why I chose these runes. Because when you mm -hmm. when you want to get into divination with runes, I'm not mostly of two types, but I'm pretty sure there are more out there. 
You have the Viking runes, which is the one that Mimi has. He's a lot more into Viking mythology and such. And then you have the witch runes, which I use, because like I said, they seem a little tarot in certain ways. Blue stream on first break, let's go, wait what? Oh yeah. Oh, Sam! By the way, I pulled your cards! Yeah? You know <laughs> You know you know how Shenzi pulled the Empress for uh, something to look forward to? I pulled the Emperor. <laughs> and she pulled the star upside down, I pulled the moon for <laughs> things you should avoid. <laughs> so congratulations! What do you mean? Why is everyone surprised about my hands? I have done hand cam streams before! Not even too long ago. I did it yesterday. And I did it at the beginning of the year. Have you all done been here? Shame on you. <laughs> Shame on you. It was the stream I was looking most forward to and none of you showed up. Shame on you. <laughs> I was Give there. Small hands. I have tiny hands, yes. Mimi has to warm because I have tiny hands. They're actually tiny, what the fuck? You would keep saying my hands are tiny. Good news, only 8 hours of work and no Saturday. Let's go! Things are looking well. But yeah, you wanna have a little look into the rooms as well? I know this was primarily a tarot stream, but I can also use... I can also show off my other methods of divination. I don't have many, I just have power, rose, and pendulum. Someday I will get a crystal. But this day is not today. You're back, welcome back. I'm, I'm scared of ordering a crystal just because I know that the people delivering the mail will probably just chuck it over the wall again, which obviously won't make it break. Yeah. But I also don't know if we have any shops here that sell these kind of things. I know there are stores out there that are for witchy stuff, but I don't know if we have it here. Maybe maybe in the capital. Maybe in Vienna. I'll have to check. Show off your happy deck. I don't have it in physical form. I think maybe Mimi has a few happy cards. I don't have any. I don't even know where my Pokemon cards are. Probably somewhere upstairs. Yeah, let's sort out some runes. Let's sort out some runes I know. For instance, we have the star here. The star is pretty much the similar meaning. Like the one in Tarot. Actually, let me pull up. I'm not too confident with runes yet. I don't use them that often. But I have a little handy app on my phone. You can tell me about the runes. Runes. Which runes? That's awesome. That Thank you. Song. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate the compliment. Yes, compliment the baby. No! <laughs> compliment the baby! No! Yes. Okay, the star. Uh, it says... This is not the star. This is the star. Go for what one desires, achieve what one seeks, find purpose. This one is biased, the rules around it. To be oneself, to accept oneself, freedom. So it is similar in the tarot meaning, but not exactly. I do you have a human transmutation cycle around by Earth, material rebound alchemy cycle? Why are you confusing me? <laughs> I think I was surrounded by six... By six side stars. <laughs> I don't know, man. I just thought it was neat. BRB, okay. Like I was going BRB again. He's taking another nap as we speak. <laughs> okay, you know what? Um, We're just gonna cast the runes and see what happens. So there are different ways you can cast runes. You can do it like tarots, single cards, where you put them all in the bag or container you have, and you pull one out and you kind of read it out there. There's also another method where you take all of them into your hand and you just yeet it. And 
obviously the runes that have the face side up are the ones you want to read. And I've also heard that the rune that is furthest away from you is the most important one. I don't know what's furthest away, but who knows. And obviously, uh, they, runes also affect each other. They don't have like a set spread like cards do, but they do still influence the ones around it. Full Metal Alchemist reference, probably. Yeah, that's funny. Darts are shake validly. Results may vary, probably. Okay, let me shake, shake, shake. And... We have a lot that are up. Oh. The furthest away is the moon. Oh. <laughs> Starting upgrade. So, this is the moon. This is the rings. I have to remember, one of them is man, the other woman. This is, I think, direction or something else. This is romance. We have the eye. We have harvest. Hmm. I think that is wind. Okay, let me consult my funny little app. So yes, uh, moon, rings. This was, like, this was man, and this is woman, so I was right on that. This is... Where is it? Crossroads. Close enough to directions. This is romance. This is just called the eye. Okay, this is waves. This is harvest. But do still remember some of them. Okay. Let's say the moon is the farthest away in isolation. It's for long-term changes, transitions, and shifts can signify hidden agenda secrets. Imagination, intuition, and feminine energies. I mean, that sums up your yeah. thing of wanting to dress more feminine. Yeah. As cycles repeat themselves, however, pay attention to your intuition. Your dreams may have special messages for you during this time. There may be much secrecy and mystery. The moon can be a nurturing, motherly influence that gives advice that simply must be followed. This rune is used for magical work or spells to increase power. It is used to represent the moon goddess. Oh, we already figured. Uh-oh, hail. Lego has your, your throne <laughs> in a grip. Careful. Let's go. Moon repair to get vibe checked within 28 days. else. So this is, I guess, the core of our question or answer, which by the army is. Let's see what the what man has, does. has he done anything? Has Lego done anything, or is he just learning? I don't know. Oh, the I have just Sam, checked you the have Discord and like. I can see it. <laughs> does anything happen? Like... We have the man. Traditional masculine characteristics, action, strength, passion, protection, provider, empowerment. So it is very similar to the Emperor. Actions can be decisive but unwise. The rune represents a quick but inconsistent result and sometimes has an element of surprise. It also symbolizes stubbornness, short-term thinking, and war. <laughs> You're going to war! Going to the trenches! <laughs> Danya. Danya. Well, hmm. I guess the rash decision making is maybe also an important role in all of this in isolation. Mm. Maybe the inconsistency can also be the different clothings you have. Like you will try to get. Maybe. Like, they're probably not all gonna be the same style. Like, exactly the same style. I want to check out the rings. The rings were about connections, if I remember correctly. Circumstances that connect people, combining different elements to create new ones. This rune encourages you to form right and lasting alliances. There may be a business partnership, marriage, or other team formation. <laughs> I guess... 
I guess you should seek out people who are also interested in this style. Maybe you have some in your area that do that can help you find stuff. Maybe. Like I don't know, maybe like maybe at the studio have you seen anyone similar style uh, if you like or whatever you needed to go? There are some that wear more darker styles, but I don't know if they're necessarily like wearing what I would wear. I mean, I don't know if you can probably ask them what a shop. Just check out. Maybe. Who knows? It's worth a shot. So now, this is gonna be interesting because things are a lot closer in here. Let's check out Harvest. It is a bit further down. Harvest. Blessing, receiving, working on one. Reap what has been sown. Education. Represents the fruit of a job well done. There's abundant wealth, family, happiness, and possible attainment of the next level of development in the situation at hand. All your hard work will be mightily rewarded. Don't touch good things, take time to develop. I guess that means that you shouldn't splash all your money on clothes right at once. Yeah. Like, slowly build up your collection. I like, try to experiment putting things together. But this one is pretty close to waves, but I'm pretty sure it's movement. Yeah, it's the first one, it's movement! I knew you remembered it correctly. Movement, connection to the spiritual things that are not in your control. Insecurity, following with life, loss of control. I guess that kind of goes hand in hand with the harvest. Any okay. guidance? Like, make sure you're not losing control. <laughs> oh no, like, it pulls a quote and it slams gavel. You're a pronounced a wife in crisis. Space. Sounds about right. <laughs> Okay, what else about the waves? Things are not clear. You must reflect to see the situation with more perspective. There may be a lie in your life or someone who is completely delusional. Hey, that's me! Great spiritual forces of mystery are at work so you can feel the influence. Misunderstandings become emotional. Great art can come from great distress. Spirits and ancestors may be influencing you. Your ancestors are telling you to buy goths that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so there's more Koza is uh is checking around the other closet uh yes I am opening my gate and then <laughs> slaps top of shouts. This baby can hold so many midlife crises. Even her midlife crises have crises. Down. Opening up her, uh, the wardrobe to release her gay to put more goth into the gay closet. <laughs> Now for the interesting ones. These are kind of close together. These are still separated by something, but they have a close connection. These are right next to each other. I want to see their meaning. Because this is the woman. This is basically the Empress, as far as I know. Traditional feminine abilities and characteristics. Healing, purification, home, creativity, nurturing, and containment may represent a woman who is linked to the question. Other characteristics defined with the symbols are close observation, metal resistance to pain, foresight, and a link to our four mothers. <laughs> so I guess we are still on the ancestor side. Hmm. It symbolizes a long-term strategy, flexibility in reasoning, and peace. Now this is right next to the crossroads. So we have a lot of feminine energy next to the crossroads, which is making important life decisions. They are known, stagnation, being afraid to move. So we have this very strong feminine energy connected very closely with wanting to move. Important life decisions. I mean, we already have the moon setting the tone that this was mainly about your know, femininity expression and all that. 
The yeah. guest is fair than this. Now we have romance and the eye. I think romance is like the lovers. We have relationship, deep emotional connections, harmony, and soulmates. Um, the eye, I think, was for seeing things. Yes, it's like the high priestess. Mm. Well, if they veil to see the truth, to focus on some things like the ability. What about mm. lovers? The lovers card, like, girl. <laughs> you must be independent and take time for yourself. Know what you really want and need. Interesting. That is right to the to the, the romance. <laughs> the guess for the sake of romance, you have to figure out what you really enjoy. I know this question was mostly supposed to be where to find new clothes, but I guess it was getting deeper. Yeah. I mean, I, mean I, have my, guidance... I, I have my reasons for wanting the more feminine clothes, which may also... Uh, like, it stems from a deeper problem that may also... that also can interfere with uh, a relationship. Yeah. But it's not something I should probably talk about on stream. And that is fair, you don't have to. I mean, it sounds like the rules are on point as well. Yeah. I mean, the only guidance I could really find on this is to try to ask around people that you maybe <coughs> can talk to. Yeah. I don't know what the atmosphere in the studio is like if you can welcome to someone like, Hey, nice clothes, why you buy that? Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit more difficult than like the... Because, like, with, uh, I do, like, two things. I do painting and I do textile. And painting is mostly old people. Not really finding what I'm yeah. looking for there. Uh, in textile, there <laughs> are a couple that wear darker styles, but on the other hand, they might have also made that themselves. It's about the same. Maybe you can also look into trying to make it yourself if you're interested. Yeah, I mean... I mean... I'm not I mean, sure. I know that the stuff you probably want to do is like very advanced. Yeah, I'm like, I'm not sure I yeah. have the capabilities to do that immediately, but. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah I mean. It, I don't think you can make like a gothic Lolita dress on your first attempt. Not really? I mean, so seeing from mention, how... Fabrics are usually more expensive than buying a dress. I mean, I guess it depends where you buy it from. Yeah. My sister actually really likes to make her own clothes, and she's actually doing like big, elaborate dresses for herself. She usually buys her own clothes. Like another thing that Maybe. like somewhat interests me is like uh, historically like accurate fashion. Oh yeah. You know, burning that like runner? which. You know, Bernadette Banner. Yeah. Yeah, that that inspires me. Because <laughs> it has like some like wishy things as well, and I'm just like, I kind of would like to try, but on the other hand, oh god. Like I know I don't have to make it like entirely accurate with like all the like teeny tiny like hand zones and details and that kind of stuff, but that still is a lot of figuring out. The pad stitches the scare me! <laughs> the back stitches? The pad stitches. The past. I was like, oh god, do I have to do that? <laughs> god, I was always so bad at drafting. Even though I enjoy it, I'm still shit at it. I mean, like, I, had uh, to do I it. finished the, uh, the main clothes for one of my cosplays. I've sewn it largely on my own now, so... It's not the greatest thing, but, I mean, hey, I made it. That's a pretty good step. Yeah. No, but like I said, uh, like I said there as well, like, I, I can always do it again once I have more expertise, but, like, at this point... I think this is the, the furthest I can get with my current skills. Which is, you know, I mean, not the worst thing. I feel like people probably have made worse things as their first cosplay, like their first handmade cosplay, so... Yeah. I mean, you're still learning. 
Yeah. I mean, I feel like sewing is one of the most time-consuming skills to learn, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's time-consuming, but it's also just, like, depending on what you decide to work with, it can be either really easy or really difficult. Yeah. Because I, I, I mean, chose, like I chose a fabric that did not want to work with me, which made it a lot more difficult. But if you have like, you know, if you stayed, if you stayed through like really easy to work with fabrics, then yeah, it's gonna go a lot easier. Yeah. I don't know much about sailing, so sadly I can't really help out much with it. Yeah, no, that's fine. I mean, I have guidance there. Otherwise, I wouldn't be there. <laughs> Fair. Yeah, I guess we that's all I can really gather from the runes for now. I should I need more practice with the runes. I am your test subject. <laughs> I know. Like I like runes, but I I just feel more drawn to tarots. But I still like to experiment with it. I wanna try all sorts of divination forms. Yeah. Divination is fun. Like, I don't know if like, next uh, experiment. Oh, I forgot to grab a book. Hold up. What are we going to play tonight? Um, I'm not sure. I'll find that out in a bit, I guess. Hi, you back. Welcome back. Ah, I have grabbed two books. I don't even know if the information on the Celtic Cross is in there or not. This, uh, is the book where I got most of my tarot knowledge from. Like, I got most of it from the little booklet that came with the fairy tale deck I have, but this one goes a lot more in depth and made me understand the minor arcanas and the stories I mentioned, because it, it explains pretty detailed, like, each and every card. It's also all in German. <laughs> the pages are so, so thin. I wonder, I don't know if there are any... Things that we have. We have some easy. Page 323. These are some of the spreads with three cards. There it is, the Celtic cards. So let me see what this says. So I think this cross part is largely the same no matter what description I look for. So you have the first card underneath here that is the situation. Then you have here the thing that's in the way. Maybe it's an obstacle. Well, yeah, it's basically an obstacle. Like maybe to the situation. Maybe because of it you are in the situation. Or maybe because of it, you can't get out of it. Then we have here the past that led you to this situation. And then here we have the near future. So this is just like what happens the next couple of days or weeks, depending on it. But it's not the, the end of things. Then you have here your conscious, what you think about it. And your subconscious down here, what you do not. Things you think, but you don't know that you And then you have these four cards over here, but just when I try to look up for Celtic cards, I get different results for what these four cards are supposed to be. So we have the bottom card. Mm. Influence. Well, is this the, the... Wait, is this the outside influence? Wait, no, okay. This is uh, guidance. This is advice, the bottom card. 
then the second card is the external influence. Then you have your fears and hopes, fears and or hopes. And then here, that is the end goal. So this is the one... Okay, I've seen this exact description somewhere else before too, so I'm pretty positive this is right. I want to see if this book, uh, this book also has it, because this uh, is this the castle bitch here. Like it's all about divination, like even different types of divination, and like other tools you can use. I think it also has some for. Palm reading and such. And also some apps and such. But again, it's all in German. This is what I... Like a few days ago when I messaged you, I have bought more books. Help. <laughs> <laughs> These are some of the books I bought. Um... Hmm. Let me just go to the tarot section. A hundred and six. Explains it again. This. This is the fives. Section about the fives. Why is my attacking last dead? Don't scare me like that. Oh, that's a pendulum. Okay, so I guess this book doesn't have any spread. So I'm going with this one. I have done something similar like this before. What is this? Let's put it over here for now. The pendulum! Ah, pendulum. Get out the glass! Are you ready to go again? Yippee! Ah, uh, yippee, let's go! God, this one gets tasty. I should make that more often. <laughs> I'll shuffle, I'll shuffle. You know what? I'm sure shuffle on camera again in case a card falls out again neatly. <laughs> neatly landing. <laughs> uh, and then it's the death card! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting for this to happen whenever I read for you. Yeah, it's not a reading for me if it doesn't have a death card somewhere. <laughs> there surely is a death card somewhere in this deck. Will it show itself or will it not? Hey. I mean, with you around, death is always nearby, so... Yeah. I don't need a card for that. Yeah, but it's funny when, uh, funnier when the dick confirms that I'm there. True. When I shazzy, give me a sign and you just slap the death card like... Yes, you're here. <laughs> the car is just like, um, there is uh, the, the, there's something watching over your shoulder. It's like, oh, it's just me. Hello! <laughs> True. Okay, let's go. This is gonna be interesting. Actually, let me shuffle a little bit more. This is a big one, after all. We might need to shuffle a lot. I think I've made pretty good progress uh, on the art I'm working on in the meantime. Yeah, I've been watching you down the fuck on <laughs> I went fast. Okay. Meow. <coughs> Meow. Meow. This is enough. So let's go. We start off with the current situation and what is your blockade what is stopping you from progressing and getting out of it now what led you to this i almost burned myself on the candle let's go <laughs> <laughs> now we have the foreseeable future how are things gonna develop and we have your conscience and your unconscious your subconscious the four cards over here we have you have our advice 
we have external influences. We have your hopes and all fears. And the end result of all of this. God, the Celtic cast also takes so much fucking space. <laughs> Celtic class is a fun one because some, like, say for beginners, oh, yeah, if you want to try out a big spread and not just a two to three spread, this is a good one because it's like very popular with lots of resources. But at the same time, it can be difficult to start with a big one because you have so many cards and factors. Yeah, and they have to tie them all together. Cards like this. Yes, and then you also have this card, which is an and or a hope of these, or both. But yeah. that's but it's a fun one when you feel like you've gotten a good grip on the cast and you want to test it. Yeah. So now we have your situation. It's the King of Wands! The King of Wands. Oh. Hmm. King of Wands. So it's about a passion. Passion you control or you want to control. Hmm. Passion currently in your control. Let's keep that in mind. Now we have what's in the way. The devil! Oh. <laughs> Why do I feel like the last time I did the Celtic cross, we also got the devil. I might have been in similar. there. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Well, the devil being your blockade is stereotypically fitting. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the, it's also the cards I have a personal connection to, so, I mean, the, the, really it's just me holding back me, huh? Hmm, it might be. I can't deduct really what it may be, specifically, because like I said, this can represent the classic Seven Sins, like Pride or Jealousy or something. Who knows? It is... Something deep within yourself, though. Maybe a bit of an ugly side. <clears throat> Maybe. Now, how did we get here? Oh boy, it is the Six of Cups upside down. No. Nope. Usually, the Six of Cups represent things like friendship and connection. So, this might be the last of it. Hmm. The loss of someone dear to you, well not someone, but maybe also something dear to you, has cast you into this situation where you want to be in control of something you're passionate about, but your own self, your own thoughts, maybe doubts are in the way. Hmm. Hmm. Let's us further, see how the story changes. So what is the foreseeable future? Savannah! <laughs> oh. So, something will come to a satisfying end, it seems. Mm hmm. Hmm. Like, seemingly, the end of a journey, the end of something. Maybe you were looking for something and you're actually gonna find it soon. Maybe. It's not over yet. Still something. Another thing we have to keep in mind is these are two major arcana, so we should probably pay attention to those. Yeah. I'm... So what do we know about your conscience? Oh, look at that! We got judgment upside down! Oh, no. Judgment upside down. Usually a climax. Maybe you're being put in the wrong. Maybe your head is blaming yourself about the situation that you feel like you have a hard time to move on to maybe maybe or maybe even to continue you're probably putting blame on something or someone though a dude maybe your unconscious knows your unconscious says it's the three of pentacles Okay. Three of Pentacles is the movement in the financial stability. 
Wait, I remember something about the three. Was the three about holding? I think the three was it about sharing? Hold up, let me consult the booklet real quickly. <laughs> Cause I'm getting confused. Three of Pentacles. It's this card, okay. So it is about learning and growing. Working together. Hmm. Mm. So your subconscious wants to grow and learn from the situation. Whatever you've gotten yourself into. Alright. It is, it, is, it is taking this as a learning thing. Maybe a good thing, maybe a bad thing. Who knows? Oh, no. Let's go. I mean, now that we have all of these uncovered, we can try to think more of it. If you think of something you want to be in control, a passion of yours, being blocked by yourself, your own thoughts, will something come to mind? Mm. I mean, it's not necessarily a passion, but it almost. So that almost seems to tell a tale of overcoming trauma. Mm. So like the loss of something dear to you? You don't mm. have to say what it is, just if... It would be like more... A loss of something in myself. Mm. Interesting. Something in yourself. Are you perhaps blaming someone or something for losing it? I would be, yes. You will be. Hmm. I guess you are taking this as a learning thing. I hope it's not something negative, though. And we have hmm. the world, which means the end of something. Maybe the end of your worries, the end of your blaming. Hmm. Well, this is the foreseeable hmm. future, like the near future. Yeah. Like maybe the next week or two. We'll see how it develops. Now let's yeah. go to the advice, now that we know a bit more of what it might be. We have the chariot upside down! Oh dear. Chariot is usually about going off a beaten path, going on a journey, indulging del into the unknown. So I guess the opposite of it is to not wander too much into unknown territory. Maybe try to stay in one place for a while. To look around you and look at your situation. Hmm. Like not having to hurry to an end. You have time. Now let's see what external influences we have. It's the Nine of Wands. Hmm. Nine of Wands usually means that you are tired. You want to rest. You want to sit down and heal from something. I am tired. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, understandable. Does I am always tired. <laughs> well, we know what is externally influencing you. Mental tiredness tired. always. Yippee. Oh boy. Now we have your hopes and all fears. There we go! Three assaults again! Oh no. Your fear is of being betrayed, being backstabbed by someone or something. Yeah. Or maybe it's a hope. Maybe you are hoping someone will leave you, someone will prove that they might be not as great as you wish them to be. I don't know. Whatever you feel like sounds more correct. What do you think? I mean... It could be both, in a sense. In a way. Understandable. So now, last but not least, we have the end result of it all. The sun! Oh. 
Ah, oh, we get a wholesome ending. <laughs> Everything's gonna turn out all right, and you're gonna celebrate it. You're gonna be very happy about it. Look at that, the Celtic class, and it has a wholesome ending. Wow. Beautiful story indeed. Maybe that also helps with Harold and Harold Spreads to make more story out of it. Yeah. yeah. I'm a sucker for stories, maybe that's why. <laughs> There's a reason I binged through like 200 episodes webtoon in like five days. <laughs> mm. Lego, I can't sleep in your arms. You're not over here yet. She needs to buy black candles first. <laughs> 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 Don't tell him. No, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> By what? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about Don't it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's for your own good. <laughs> yeah, it's for your own good. You don't know. <laughs> And then they were, uh, what Pluto said, good, good. <laughs> I may or may not have given her ideas. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh. Oh god, it's been five hours for me. Oh damn. You wanna, you wanna call it a night? Yeah, and I might have to do a little bit of the, 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 the evening. The evening, that is fair. I don't know if I continue doing spreads. If other people, like, still want me to read something for them, now is your chance! Or you'll have to wait until later. Like, we're still splooning, right? Yeah. <laughs> no. I can squeeze some tarot in splooning. <laughs> I have hit you. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> ah! Uh, God! Gonna go back in, in, into the vault? Oh no. Quick, delete the vault! Quick, delete the vault! <laughs> <laughs> delete the evidence! <laughs> he doesn't need to know. <laughs> I mean, it's he a whole five hours he has to go through. Oh, that's fun! <laughs> <laughs> Whole last five hours. <sighs> oh my god, I just noticed Sangha started streaming. Oh, Sangha was doing Sangha still, right right still right? Hey, that's uh, why I think I'm, I'm too tired to right raid. That is fair. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just see the messages. I can last a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see about that once she buys it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how long it can last. Fucking hot. Mimi knows about the trick, I think. I hope. I don't know. I I, I told him <laughs> hmm? about um the, the the thing we're not telling Lego. Yeah, we we can't say it right now because Lego is around. They'll tell you after stream. What? What? But but a minute. Okay. <laughs> I know plenty of Italian. I know Porco Dio. That's not. Tugane. Stronzo. Troyarte. 
Oh, cazzo, Rola, perché... Cazzo! <ride> Ma dai! Sì, I know so many Italian words! Yeah, what was the other one? What was the other one? Io sono... Mela! Io sono una mela! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what was sorry in Italian again? Scusa me. Scusa me. Scusa me. Sono una mela. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna end stream. Yeah, that is fair. I'll probably end it too and we'll see what song goes up to. Yeah, right, baby. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Okay, what the Oh. Thank you guys for stopping by and all the compliments and, you know, just sitting through us being idiots, as usual. Should be back tomorrow with the good old sploonening. We'll be Splatfest uh, Team Keyboard, I believe. God, I am... Uh, ah. Ah. Uh, Yeah, we'll be doing Splatfest then, uh, maybe Sunday as well, depends on some circumstances. Uh, yes. Adorable? No. No, 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 I'm not. I'm not. Is there are No, you are, actually. You are? <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I will be heading off the Helga Library. Yeah, I'm tired. So, yeah. Again, thank you for, you know, showing up, being there, doing your thing. And, um, hopefully, I'll see you tomorrow, maybe. Alright, bye bye, chat. Bye bye. Good night. Uh, <laughs>